Good evening, folks, and welcome to tonight's episode of Black Project Gaming. Get read in at blackprojectgaming.com. I'm Vince, returning as your host and handler for this evening's session. Tonight, we continue our playthrough of Sweetness, a scenario written for the Delta Green role-playing game by Dennis Detwiller. For more information on Delta Green, please visit delta-green.com. Joining me tonight are Brett as FBI Special Agent Gus Coldwell, Cami as Dr. Josephine McCarthy, Doug as Victor Mikhailov, Jack as Dr. Emily Mraz, and Sonia as Deputy U.S. Marshal Sarah Chakravorty. In our last episode, the men and women of Working Group Jackdaw were brought together in Tampa, Florida to investigate the unsettling and potentially unnatural events surrounding the Bernier family. A few nights ago, the Berniers were woken by a mysterious fire outside the residence and a strange symbol carved at their front door. That symbol was what garnered Delta Green's attention. Investigation has revealed that it is associated with Kor, also known as Yaz, queen of the underworld and goddess of an ancient Greek mystery cult. Smeared into the carving were what police determined to be the blood and innards of various lizards and rodents. Jackdaw immediately went to work to determine whether or not these events had an unnatural nexus. Coldwell and Chakravorty liaised with Tampa Police Detective Lucas Graham to review a draft of his investigative report, while McCarthy and Mraz began their interviews of the Berniers themselves. While the doctors did the talking, Mikhailov took the opportunity to scout out the Lower Hillsboro Wilderness Preserve, only a short distance from the Bernier residence, with his commercial drone. While inspecting the Bernier residence itself, Dr. McCarthy found another symbol of core carved into the wall in a crawl space just off Chad Bernier's room. Dr. Mraz, meanwhile, found an unsettling drawing on the wall near Catherine Bernier's bed. In it, a child that is presumably Catherine is holding hands with a black, featureless shadow figure. A brief interview with the father, Timothy Bernier, revealed some disturbing allegations concerning his ex-wife and the children's biological mother. However, before the group could dig in for further details, the Bernier children arrived home from school. And that is where we will begin tonight's session. And we are live, folks. So, uh, so yeah, what, uh, so as you all are sitting there talking to uh, Timothy and Evelyn Bernier, the kids uh, arrive home from school. Uh, I, I stand up uh, and face them uh, at attention, just so keeping myself quiet, but also acknowledging that they have arrived. Yeah, and Chad, uh, from what you can tell, Chad Bernier, uh, they're both good-looking kids. I mean, they both definitely inherited the, the looks of their, their parents, who, who are by no means unattractive people. Um, both mixed-race children. Uh, Chad is 16, uh, looks to be a typical 16-year-old. Um, he, he walks in, and, and uh, Catherine isn't far behind him. Uh, but they, they kind of stop dead in their tracks when they see all these people gathered in the, in the living room talking to their mother and father. Uh, Chad is actually the first one to speak up, and he says, uh, uh, Mom, Dad, what's, uh, what's going on here? And Timothy looks up and says, uh, these are, uh, they're with, uh, the FBI. They're here kind of looking into what happened around the house. Why don't you, why don't you take Catherine upstairs and, and, uh, get started on your homework? And Chad kind of looks like he's going to start, um, arguing a bit, but of course, Timothy shoots him one of those patented dad looks. And, uh, the kid- uh actually, Timothy, um... Uh, and I look to uh, Joseph, Joe, and uh, Victor. Um, we can give you a bit of time to settle in. Um, uh, we'll be right outside, though. And I sort of motion non verbally for them to follow. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Um, absolutely. And they'll let you all leave. Okay, I start to head towards the door after that. Yeah, I'll follow out. Same. Okay. Um, and then, are are you guys parked somewhere that we can see you, it's like from the porch? Like, can you see us as we get out onto the the front porch, Augustus? Yeah, I would say right across the street. Okay. Like not in front of the their house, but like across the street. Okay. Um. Well, I, I'll look over to the to the other car and just uh, acknowledge it. Um, but going back to Victor and. Uh, Joe, uh, I need some more time here. Okay, the question. I'd... Oh, sorry, what was that? You gonna question the kids? Uh, yes, um, I, I would like one of you here, but I don't want too many of you here with me to overwhelm the family. Um, 
I look back over to the car. Are are they, you guys just sitting in, or are you gonna come out? Yeah, I think we would get out, and come over, or he would at least turn to uh, Sarah and be like, "Uh, they're exited. Maybe we should go and tell them what we." Hmm. Good, good, good. Yeah. She you can go here if you want. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll go in. It's fine. All right, let's go. I get out, get out of the car and walk over. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, I'll start walking down the porch so I can like meet them in the street or like on the sidewalk in front of the house. Hey guys. Oh hey, it's Mister Smiley guy, huh? That's me. You know it, Victor. How y'all doing? I got pictures of alligators. It was very exciting. That's alligators? In the in the nature preserve. Ah. Okay, cool. Uh, how the rest of y'all did? <laughs> it's not all we found. We found more than just gators. All the picture on my phone of the symbol. On this in there. Hmm. Face attic. It's connected to chat room with the sons. The department so they could get in. You're cutting out quite a bit, Kimmy. I didn't cut. Okay. Is this any better? Yes. What's up with my internet? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just going to start over because I don't know where I. Oh, so I show them the picture on my phone of this uh, and say, this in the uh, hall space, it's connected to, or the attic, connected to Chad's room. Pretty sure that fire was just a botched job to distract them, get them into the house so someone could sneak in and do this, maybe even more. Cool. Hey, did you guys ever find out what woke them up? Was it the smoke? Was it the noise? Was it something else? It was I remember apparently we the, asked. It was apparently the smoke detectors. Smoke detectors went off and woke them up. Do you know who the first person to wake up was? Did the parents wake up and wake up the kids, or did the kids wake up and wake up the parents? The parents woke up the children. Okay. Uh, uh, Agent Coldwell. Um, yeah. I'm going to spend a little bit more time here uh, interviewing the children. They just arrived uh, from school. Would you be so uh, gracious as to accompany me and um, keep the parents occupied and maybe also do a little bit more investigating from a fresh perspective? Yeah, absolutely. I think talking to the kids is a great act. Uh Sarah's just keeping an eye out for more suspicious figures or seeing if anyone's like trying to overhear or spy on them. Okay. There are a couple lucky loo neighbors. Um, I mean, this is this is Florida, so there are um, there's a significant elderly to middle aged person ratio. Uh, however, from what you can tell, they're really just peering through their curtains. Somebody's actively trying to eavesdrop. Okay. Did you guys find anything from the police station? Uh, you'd have to ask Sarah. She's the one that really flipped through the... Yeah, the reports are pretty incomplete. They hadn't gotten everything in it um, just yet, so we'd have probably have better luck looking into it uh, again uh, probably tomorrow or the day after because not all the officers have put in their reports in. It was pretty right. bad. They had just seen the... That's uh, fair. They, had, they hadn't even done like the forensics um, of it yet. The lab hadn't gotten back to it. Yeah, but I've got them to send me a message as soon as they figure it out. Yeah. As soon as I hear anything. Perfect. All right, so what's the plan? I am going to stay out here and play on my computer. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Playing Candy Crush. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Again, I... uh, I would like to go back and uh, keep the house as uh, unoccupied as possible. Uh, Augustus, uh, just try and keep the parents occupied and long enough so that I can get a few answers from the children, perhaps, hopefully, uh, as to what happened. Maybe they'll shed some insight without them around. 
Sure, of course. And I can kind of see if their stories continue to met. All right. Everyone else is just going to be hanging outside? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Or okay. I'll get, the, get in the car, our car at least. Okay, cool. Oh, and Victor, you had pulled some data off of the um, the family computer. Yeah, that's uh, so I take that memory stick and I, I shove it into my laptop and I start going through it and looking uh, for information. Okay, cool. And it, uh Anything that I, I find that is uh, interesting or sticks out to me, I will uh, bring it up with the, the person who's in the car with me, okay. which is probably Joe. And Sarah. Yep, I'll be in and there. And Sarah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, real quick. So, so what you do find is that um, each individual member of the family has their own profile set up on the computer um, and parsing through those, starting with the kids. Nothing outwardly suspicious or unusual um it looks like they mainly use the computer for homework you've found a few saved homework assignments some essays um so, some evidence that chad may or not be actively plagiarizing some of his essays from online <laughs> um, but uh but nothing nothing too unusual uh yet but it, it is going to take some time to parse through the data uh, but in the meantime uh dr Mraz and uh, gus uh, you head inside of the home uh, I will ask uh, Victor and Joe um, if you could uh, just cross-reference any any uh, any findings online about the uh, the ex-wife. Um, and I don't I don't think I wrote down her name. Um, Sarah Garrison. Sarah Garrison. If you could uh, cross-reference anything um, having to do with Sarah Garrison, uh, see if she's been uh, if there are any police reports, any any of arrests. Maybe perhaps she's made her way closer towards Florida. Just Try and find out anything you can about her. Will do. Oh, okay. All right. I'll go with with uh, Gus. Is that a proper nickname for you? Um, uh, people call me. Yeah. I, I I say that in player, not in character. So Gus is. Uh, anyway. Well, that, um, that is what people call him. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, good. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I start to head up with you, uh, and uh, as I start to make my way like towards the front door, I knock, and I immediately become more personable and friendly. Uh, yeah, Timothy <laughs> answers the door again and says, uh, well, hey, um, do you guys, did, did we need to talk more, or are you just about done? Uh, if you didn't mind, actually, this is uh, an associate of mine, Special Agent Augustus Coldwell. Um, Hi, you must be Timothy. You can call me Gus. And he hands it. And he's like, yeah, he takes your hand, shakes it. Uh, Gus, good to good to meet you. Um, yeah, you can call me Tim. Um, nice to meet you too, Tim. How much longer do y'all think this is gonna take? Uh, I just wanted to let the children settle in before, it, perhaps, if it was all right, uh, ask them a few questions uh, about the night of an incident. The question. Evelyn immediately uh, chirps up and and says, "Yeah, you can you can talk to him, but I'll I'll need to be present." Oh, of course, of course. Hey, Evelyn, uh, I know this can be some sometimes a bit of a tough pill to swallow, but there are some things that kids don't always like to talk about in front of their parents. Now, Doctor uh, Mraz over here is is a professional. She's very good at what she does. Um, but it might be beneficial both for our investigation um, and for her for her work just to have a brief chat with them by themselves. Go ahead and make a make a persuade check. Ugh. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So forty two out of seventy. Absolutely. Uh, she looks at you, and, and it, you, you get the, you kind of have that, that tense feeling in your gut, like, for a moment that she is not going to buy what you're selling, and she's going to insist on accompanying them, but, but finally she says, uh, all right, yeah, um, we'll give you 15 minutes, is that long enough? 
Absolutely. And then uh, uh, once that's done, f please feel free to join us. Um, again, I just need to ask them a couple questions. Uh, we won't be long. All right. 15 minutes, and I'll come up and check on them. Of course. All right. And I, uh, are they both upstairs? They are. Yeah, they've kind of uh, they've made their way to their separate rooms. Okay. I'll go upstairs and let Gus handle uh, the downstairs. Yeah, we'll start, with, we'll start with Mr. Coldwell first. Yeah, I'm sorry to bother y'all. It's been a very long day. Do you have a, a cup of coffee or maybe a tea or something that I could get from you? Uh, Evelyn says, yeah, sure. Let me uh, let me go rustle something up for you. And she heads off into the kitchen to get a uh, and find something for you. Uh, and he looks at Timothy and goes, I really am sorry for all the time that we're spending on this. I know it does seem to be a little bit uh, fruitless, uh, but we're just trying to, you know, cross our keys, dot our eyes, that kind of thing. Make sure it's not something more than, than what it looks like, which is, in my opinion, plain teenage. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there. Uh, I, I don't know if this really garners federal attention. I mean, I never thought I'd be talking to FBI agents in my living room for some vandalism, but... Uh... But yeah, no, you, I, you guys have a job to do, and, and, you know, I appreciate it. Totally. We're just trying to make sure, mostly that it's something that we don't need to investigate, if that makes any sense. I know it sounds silly, but... Uh, so I, I just would like to run through a few questions with you again. Uh, I know you probably answered them before, uh, and I'm sorry, I know it's frustrating. Uh, but what is it exactly that awoke you? Well, I mean, the first thing was was the the smoke alarms, the, the smoke detectors going off. The smoke was uh, the fire had started off from what we could tell on the outside of the house, outside the kitchen, and the smoke was coming in underneath the uh, the back door. Okay, uh, were you the first one uh, to? Evelyn was actually. She's a much lighter sleeper than I am, and she woke me up, and then we went and got the kids. Oh, okay. Uh, how long, uh, Evelyn? woke you up before leaving the room or had she left the room and then come no she she woke me up uh, pretty much immediately and then uh, we both went and got the kids she went and got chad and i went and got uh got Catherine. okay and they were both asleep in their rooms when you went again uh, i think chad was Catherine was awake uh but i don't know if it was i'm pretty sure it was the smoke detector that woke her up okay and you're the one that went to get Catherine. correct yeah. Okay, this may seem like a little bit of a weird question, but did Catherine seem fully awake to you uh, when you arrived in the room, or just kind of stirring from sleep? You know how people seem a little sleepy, a little... Uh, you know, now that you mention it, she was kind of... Uh, she wasn't in bed, she was by her toy chest. Kind of looked like she'd been, I don't know, going through it or sitting there or something. Okay, is it normal for her to be up at that time? Of and she's kind of a restless kid. She's uh, you know, she's she's up and down all hours of the, of the night. Sometimes she'll be playing in her room. Sometimes she'll just be reading. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Uh, now just to be clear, you get down the stairs. You're the first one to go down. Yeah, yeah, it was me, uh, me with Catherine, and then uh, Evelyn with Chad. Okay. Oh, sorry. I think my phone's going. Just one sec. Uh, and uh, Gus is going to pull out his phone uh, and look like he's checking it. Sorry, I'm just going to check a message here really quick. I hope you don't mind. It's work stuff. Yeah, no. Uh, and he's actually going to send a text uh, to Dr. Mraz yeah. saying the girl was awake uh, first. Yeah. And I'll send her the text. Okay. Sorry about Thanks. that. No, you're, you're fine. And with that, we'll segue to Dr. Mraz. Um, so getting that text message, uh, I, I pause for a bit. Uh, as I'm like, reach the top of the steps, I look at it, uh, and I switch to the notes app of my phone. Uh, and knowing that she is deaf, uh, I don't knock, but I do let myself in. Um, what do I say? She's uh, sitting on the carpet, and it looks like she's uh, kind of going through her school books and through her homework assignments for a day. It looks like she's actually getting ready to start working on some of her assignments. And she okay. she does look up and uh, as you step into the room and kind of smiles at you. Oh, can I add something to the text? I'm sorry. 
Sorry yeah, to interrupt. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, check the toy chest is added to the... Okay. Um, so I put into my notes, um, uh, I put in, hello, my name is Emily. And I show it to her with a big smile on my face. But not a creepy smile, but like a very... <laughs> yeah. Smile. Uh, she smiles and, and she initially starts to um, sign back at you, but then kind of realizes based on the, the notes on your phone that maybe you don't know uh, American Sign Language. So she actually pulls over her notepad and, and writes down, um, hi, I'm Catherine. I acknowledge, I smile and I'd like nod and acknowledge it. And uh, I kind of scoot up next to her and uh, I gesture to see if uh, she'll allow me to have a, like a crayon or a pencil, whatever she's uh, she's using to, to write out with. Yeah, she passes you a um, like a purple um, colored pencil. I smile back, um, and I just write in, "How old are you?" Ten. Uh, how was school? It was all right, long, but uh, it's the weekend. And smiley face. I'm actually a friend of your mom and dad. I know that something pretty scary happened here the other night, and I just wanted to check and make sure that you are okay. Yes, me and Chad are fine. It was scary, but I think it'll be okay. Do you know what happened? No. Did you see anything? No. Did you wake up, or did your dad or mom wake you up? My dad woke me up. I paused for a bit, knowing what the text said. Do you have many friends in this area? Mainly from school. Other kids like me. Do they come hang out? Sometimes. Who's your best friend? She thinks for a minute, um, then writes down Emily. That's my name. Just smiles. Well, I hope that I am. I, I can be a friend to you and your family. She writes down, you seem nice. Thank you. Uh, and I smile and, and nod, and I look over at the toy chest, and I write, what kind of toys do you have? Well, she gets up and gestures you over and throws it open, and uh, inside are, you know, a typical um, you know, a toys you would expect a 10-year-old girl to play with. I mean, there's some other stuff mixed in there, so you, you've got uh, um, some Marvel action figures, you got some Barbie dolls, you got a chemistry set, a bunch of board games, um, Stuff like that. Nothing, uh, drawing supplies, but nothing that strikes you as out of the ordinary. Um, I take the pad. Uh, what's your favorite toy? Uh, she pulls out her chemistry set. I'm sort of a scientist, too. She immediately starts grinning ear to ear and says, I want to be a scientist. Stay in school and I'm sure you, you can get you can get there. Do you work on rocket ships? No. I work with people, and I try to help fix their mind. That sounds amazing. And a smile and a sm chuckle and smile back, I think, for a minute. Uh, you like to draw, yes? I do. Um, and as I'm doing this, I'm kind of like using the, the, the writing and, and while I'm actually, while she was digging through the toy chest, I'll take out the piece of paper that I took, uh, with the drawing on it. Uh, and I start to unfold it, uh, but I wanted to make sure that I took it out, uh, while she was doing that. So she didn't think I was like, had stolen it or something like that. Um, um, but I present it to her. What is this drawing of? Her smile immediately fades and she says... Nothing, just a dream I had. I have 
dreams I don't like too. Yep, and with your human score, she's lying. Yeah. What what do you mean what kind of lying though? Something back. Maybe misrepresenting okay. the fact that this was a dream. Okay, so it's more more, more like being evasive. Be evasive. Okay, well I tell her I sometimes have uh, people come visit me, and I, I sometimes have dreams that uh, I don't like as well. Uh, what don't you like about this dream? I never said I didn't like it. Well, how do you feel about it then? A nightmare. Who is this person? Is this a friend? When did they, when did you, I, I like, I, I just kind of write when did, and I start just trying to figure out the, the verbiage. When ago. did you start to hang out with them? A couple months ago. Do they say anything to you? They talk to me in ASL. What do they say? Tell me how my day at school is and if I'm being good. Are they ever mean to you? Her name is Sweetness. Is they... Sweetness? So. So it's a she? I think so. I can't and tell. How do you... Is it because they're... You can't see them? They're in shadow? No, I just... She's searching for the words. Um, Does just... she only come to you at night? When everyone's asleep. How does she get in? She's just always here. What did she say to you the first time that you met? She told me not to be afraid. Were you afraid? Hey, my friend. Were you afraid? At first, and then she started talking to me. And I wasn't afraid anymore. Has she promised you anything? Always visit me. You can visit her. Where does she live? She hasn't said. Have you asked? Far away. Has anyone else seen her? I don't want anybody else to see her. She said nobody else can see her. Why not? If she's a friend, don't you want your mother and father, your mom and dad to know your friends? My friend, and I don't want her to go away. Did you see her the night of the fire? For a little bit. Well, what did she do? Be together soon. Was this before or after the fire? Before. You can hear footsteps coming up the stairs. Can I hang on to this drawing? I really like it a lot. Thank you so much. And I take the the pad that we've been, the, the papers that we've been writing on and, and uh, pull them from the pad. I'm gonna hang on to these. Okay. I just fold. Yeah. I fold them up uh, into the same kind of. Uh, uh, sheet or the same kind of uh, square and then just tuck it into my back pocket. Okay. And I smile and I word, I, I mouth thank you to her. Uh, while this is going on, uh, Gus, how's your conversation with Tim going? Uh, pretty good. At this point, he's probably gonna... Uh, how long has it been now? I'll give it about probably... Um, well, so, so we'll kind of rewind a bit so while they're having this conversation we'll kind of go through your gotcha. conversation with Tim because Evelyn would come back with the coffee right? Evelyn does come back with the with the iced tea after a certain point and sets it down it's actually a sweet tea because it's Florida and everybody drinks sweet tea so mm, gotcha. sets it down in front of you uh, perfect thank you so much uh, just a little par uh, parched uh, now I'm just going to kind of run through uh, the same things with you that I did with your husband, just to kind of, you know, 
double check everything. Uh, when what was the thing that woke you up? Alarms. Okay, and did you go down first to check what was going on, or did you immediately wake up Tim? Immediately woke up Tim. Um, they usually only ever go off if we're cooking, or actually, that's only the only time they ever go off. So it had to have been something to that we needed to be uh, that we needed to take care of. So I woke him up immediately, and then we went and got the kids. I could smell I could smell the smoke um, coming up from downstairs, so I knew something was up. Uh, and you went and woke up your son, correct? Chad and uh, and Tim went and got Catherine. Chad was sleeping when you when you went into it. That boy sleeps like a rock, like his father. Yeah, he was dead to the world. Yeah, teenage boys usually do. Um, did you notice anything uh, uh, odd or off about uh, your children or anything? Did they seem particularly? Sc- uh, well, I mean, Chad was a little bit scared at first i mean being woken up like that with the alarms going off but uh once i told him what was going on he was once he woke up he was fine what's the daughter's name catherine catherine uh and how is catherine how'd she how'd she deal with it wait guys i forgot to mention there is an agent notes document in the um in the handouts that you guys should be able to have access and write down your notes in Sweet. I have I have my own notes here. I just um, just put a bunch of mine in there if people want awesome. to look. Cool. Oh, okay. cool. Uh, Catherine, Catherine was fine. She's she's such a strong, she's such a resilient kid. I mean, she didn't seem bothered at all. Yeah, it doesn't spook easy, eh? Not at all. Uh, interesting. Okay, is there anything else with no or interest at this point? Uh, by the way, Gus is just trying to stall for time. Um, he's kind of just going to be asking them a lot of like boring, repetitive uh, sort of questions to keep them to keep them with him and maybe make them not notice the passage of time as much as. Um. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah, we can we can RP that out if you want me to, but I I, I feel like it might make for a somewhat. Absolutely. He's yeah. like, so oh, the neighborhood is really nice here. How, how are you getting along with your? Who's your favorite? Any weird facts you're hearing about? Nice. <laughs> Were there any other like specific questions you want to drill down in with Tim or with Evelyn about Garrison or anybody else? Oh, I completely forgot about the, the ex-wife. Yeah. Um. So, I. Uh, it's been brought to my attention that the ex-wife may be a factor. Do you really think she would start a fire at your house? She doesn't live anywhere near here, so um, she's not in the equation. Yeah, but hypothetically, is she the type? Uh, do you mean, is she fucking nuts? Then yes, she's fucking nuts. Okay, alright, so there is some, some animosity there, to say the least. She hurt the kids. Uh, There's a lot of animosity. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, that wasn't a judgment statement. It was just an observation. Uh, you're, enti- you're entitled to your dislike, obviously. Uh, I was just wondering, when was the last time you heard from her? Has she sent you any sort of threatening notes or made any demands of you lately? And it's been it's been years, ever since divorce, ever since I got full custody. She's been gone uh, to all of us. I mean, I don't want her having any contact with the kids. The kids... They view Evelyn as their mother. Um, they only remember her from when they were babies. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't even collect child support from her. I don't want nothing to do with her. Um, Excuses to come looking for us. Uh, and this is a personal question. I, I do apologize for Brian. Um, but what specifically do you mean when you say she hurt the kid? <sighs> hey, Evelyn, why don't you go? Check on Catherine. Sure, I'll, I'll be right back. And she starts to head up. And this is when she she goes in to find. As you. soon as she starts to head up, I text uh, Augustus. Uh, I text him and just ask if they know anyone named Sweetness. And I start to head out of Catherine's room and towards Chad's as she starts to come up the stairs. Um, you get the text, Gus. Um, he glances at his phone and then puts it back in his. Yeah. Um, she, I don't know what happened to her, honestly. She, uh, she used to be so, I don't know, just, 
over the course of a few months, she just went down the drain physically, mentally, and just, I don't know, one night I, um, I remember I woke up and she was, uh, I don't know, the kids had cuts and burns on them. Cuts and burns? Yeah. What was her, uh, what was her mental state that evening? She was completely out of it. I had to call the cops to get her out of the house. They arrested her. They took her to wherever. And Okay, she was, you know, rambling. Did she seem coherent? Completely incoherent? Completely incoherent. Rambling. I don't even, I couldn't even begin to make sense of what she was saying. Do you remember any part of it at all? I don't. Yeah, that's fair. It was a long time ago. It probably has nothing to do with it either. It just, you know. I think the thing if that pisses me off. If we're dealing with vandalism at the house, yes. I think the thing that pisses me off the most is that the fucking thin blue line. You know, they they could have thrown her in jail for child endangerment, but instead they made her go to fucking classes because she was one of them. Yeah, um, that is a frustrating situation. Um. I mean, police tend to look out for each other even when, but I'm not a cop. Oh, that wasn't a, a dig at you, it's just... Oh, I know. I'm just letting you know that I'm not here for them, I'm here for you. And if she's somehow involved in this, I'm going to nail her for it. I, I do. I hope she isn't. I mean, out of our lives for years. Okay, well, let's hope we keep it that way. Hey, uh, one quick question. It's just a name that's kind of floated around a couple of times. You ever heard uh, uh, anybody around here talk about someone named... Where did you hear that? Uh, I, I'm afraid that I'm not quite at liberty to discuss it, but have you heard Have you heard the name? Uh, yeah, Sarah used to call the kids that. All right. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, from what I can tell, there isn't really anything here uh, so far as I can see. Um, we'll definitely keep in touch. I'm just going to pass you a card here so that you can get in touch with me if uh, anything out of the ordinary whatsoever uh, you notice uh, happens either around the house or in the neck. Um, again, my name is Gus, and you can call me directly. I appreciate that. Thank you. It was good meeting you. Yeah, it was good meeting you as well. And, um, again, a long shot. No reason to believe that she would be anywhere, uh, even remotely around your house. But just keep your peepers peeled for that wife of yours, ex wife of yours. Absolutely. Okay. Maybe we'll get some cameras put up after this. That is, uh, that's a wise idea. Hey, you could get one of those little, uh, what are they called? The doorbell cams? You seen those videos on the internet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, those new things. Yeah, I might need to look into that. Yeah, I love those things. They're making our job so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, it was nice to meet you, Tim. Yes. Uh, hey, what's, uh... Uh, what's going on outside? Joe, you do get a text back from the Seekers, uh, pretty, mu ah. pretty much just confirming what you already found. Okay. Cool. And, and, uh, and acknowledging the distinct lack of information on this particular goddess. Okay. Uh, I want to do a couple of things. I want to have them go specifically, since well, that's where they lived previously and there was an ex there. I want them to kind of see if they can dig up anything specific to the Chicago area, as well as the, like research. Um, since she doesn't know the details of the down or anything yet, she wants to see if she can dig up any reports on what happened um, with Sarah that caused her to lose custody of the kids. Okay. This is going to get confusing with two Sarahs. <laughs> you don't find anything on the computer um 
just it's all typical innocuous home family usage nobody's nobody's got any dark web uh traffic or anything like that that you can pick up nobody's using tor nobody's using any sort of anonymizers or it's all pretty straightforward um but you do you do check some public records and with your computer science and you, both your SIGINT skill um you, you check some records that maybe aren't so public and you do confirm that um uh, Sarah Garrison was a Chicago Police Department employee uh, up until uh, about, let's see, uh, nine years ago, uh, at which point she was medically retired from the force. All right. She does still have an address in uh, Chicago. Okay, I'll write down the address. It is, let me pull it up real quick. It is the uh, it is four two two zero North Ashland Avenue. Alrighty. It's going to be apartment uh, apartment three hundred one. And what were you asking the seekers for, Joe? Just for information on Sarah Garrison. Uh, for the seekers, I wanted to look into cult activities specific to Chicago that might have anything to do with arson, just kind of crop reference, not specifically for this cult, but maybe anything other that might be just weird arson. And Sarah, I was going to do my own re using whatever sort I have to pull any reports. Cool. Uh, I think I can. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, because uh, Victor had the more advanced SIGINT computer science skills, um, you're pretty much limited to, to Google. Um, so you find there's a bunch of Sarah Garrisons and some in Chicago, some not. So it's kind of hard to parse through the, the results you get. Um, there are some sure. defunct um, social media accounts, but uh, nothing that really uh, they can really dig, dig into. Sure. That makes sense. Uh, Jack is, I believe, still away from the computer. Run back outside. Uh, yeah, he's going to uh, call out a goodbye up the stairs to Evelyn um, and then head up the door. It's kind of like a thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Y'all get in touch if you need anything. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again. And then heads out the door. Is everybody standing on the porch, or what do they do? I'm in fourth in the car, I think. Okay, everybody went to the car. Right, he's gonna yeah, go back over the, the car. car. Got the AC cranking because even though it's February, it's still insanely hot in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Being from New Orleans, so. Yeah, he's a he's a southern boy. It's not. It's still not pleasant. It doesn't matter how long you're around it for. No, and you all you're like climate controlled constantly if you're living down there. Mm. So uh, when I see uh, Gus coming out, uh, Victor's going to jump out of the car and go to the front door and say uh, to uh, uh, Timothy, uh, I, I need to uh, fetch my battery from, uh, from your room. Your battery? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, your wife, she was letting me charge battery. Uh yeah, sure. Come on in, and and he he, he looks back at you, Gus, to make sure this guy's on the level. <laughs> uh, Gus goes. He's don't worry. He's all right. All right. Yeah. A little little weird, but you can dress him. He gives the 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 mag the maga shirt another like side eye <laughs> glance, um, and, and lets you oh, in. Oh God! Stands aside and lets you in. Great again, shirt wasn't it, Victor? Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I must have missed that the first time. Who? Yeah. He's aside and lets you, lets you in. Mm. I I see him looking at my shirt and I say, uh, "Oh, you are fun." Particularly, but uh, <laughs> teach your own. Uh, you know, uh, I think uh, it's going to be great things for America. You know, um, <laughs> we finally. Uh, uh, how you say? Drain the swamp. I tried not to laugh with goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, man. Uh, why don't you get that battery? Hey, why don't you go get your battery? I, I go get battery, okay? 
<laughs> you guess it with a, a what the fuck look on his face. Yeah, he's from Russia. I think they're the only ones that were really happy with the turnout of the election, if we're being honest with each other. That makes sense. <laughs> no, it hasn't happened yet. This is February, right? Oh, right. Okay. February of 2016, uh, right? Yeah. No. Oh, okay, then... well then just oh. retcon that entire <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> Yeah, I don't know what his deal is. He seems to really like Trump a lot. He's a, a real weird guy. Good heart, though. Nice enough. Uh, fair enough. We vouch for him. Victor gets the battery. Yep, I'll uh, collect up the battery and uh, go back out to the car. All right. Uh, while Jack is um, away, let's take a quick, uh, quick, let's say, five-minute break. Uh, we'll be back at uh, 55. Sure. 55? 55. Sure. Right. And we're back. Uh, so Gus, uh, Jack, while you're away, Gus went ahead and uh, went outside. Victor is inside the house uh, getting his battery after regaling Timothy with his love for all things Donald Trump. Um, so, of course. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you were upstairs and you were going to talk with Chad now? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I'll not because I know he's not deaf. I will knock on his door. He's also a teenage boy, so. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Smart. Um, and Eve- Evelyn's uh, kind of with you at this point. Before you go in, she says, "Hey, how did? Uh, have you talked to any of them yet?" Uh, I just got done uh, speaking with Catherine. Uh, wonderful, wonderful kid. Uh, unfortunately, she she did say that she was asleep uh, when. Uh, Timothy came to check up on her after the, the smoke alarm went off. Um, but that's about all that she was able to, to remember about that night before uh, the fire department came and everything like that. Oh, fair enough. Um, I guess you'll want to talk to Chad now. Uh, yes, uh, if you don't mind, just a couple minutes uh, to myself and uh, I just uh, very brief questions. I, I know that we've overstayed our welcome at this point. Yeah, sure. No, I'm, of course. Uh, I'll just wait out here. All right. And I knock on the door again. Yeah. And I, I look back at the uh, Evelyn to see if she can kind of coax me into the room. Uh, and she she has motions you to open the door. And I open it. Uh, who are you? Uh, hi. Uh, hello. My name is Dr. Emily Raz. Uh, I'm actually with a special investigation regarding the vandalism that happened to your home a few nights ago. I just wanted to follow up with a couple questions to see if uh, you know uh, you might have heard or saw anything. Uh, no, uh, I'm I'm just with them. Uh, I'm actually a psychologist. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. What? Uh, yeah. This little desk he's got set up at his. Uh, um against one of his walls and looks like he's he's working on some homework but he he turns in his seat to to look at you okay i shut the door uh, on evelyn and uh i I stay, I stay standing but far enough away from him so it doesn't feel threatening um uh or like i'm interrogating him uh, uh so i just wanted to uh just get some insights um you've been in the neighborhood neighborhood how long again a few years now Okay. And any any issues? Do you have friends in the neighborhood, or do you get, that you go to school with that, that come to visit you at all? Or? We got a couple in the neighborhood, but uh, it's mainly kids from school, yeah. And But they, you've, you've not had any issues with the area that you can remember, or even your parents perhaps have any issues with uh, anyone in the neighborhood? No, not, not that I know of. Um, probably some punk-ass seniors pulling a prank. And your sister, uh, are you too close? She... Yeah, absolutely. I, I look out for her as much as I can. I mean, it's hard that she goes to a different school now, but uh, yeah, I love that kid. You've not had, she's not told you about any, any issue with that, has she? No, no not really, nothing. Like, like what? Just just any, any incidents or, or any noteworthy friends of hers 
Well, I mean, uh, there's been a couple times where like I've been babysitting and I've I've heard it sounds like her and somebody else moving around upstairs, but I might go check it out. It's always oh, yeah? just her. Have you heard her talking to anybody, like an uh, imaginary friend or anything like that? I'm, not, I'm sorry, uh, I misspoke. Have you seen or ha has there been any kind of interaction that you've seen or noticed uh, between her and some kind of imaginary friend? Uh, no, uh, she's not crazy or anything. At least not. Yeah, well, imaginary friends are are, uh, are some kind of crazy manifestation. It's, it's, Usually just a, an overactive imagination. Uh, no, I'm usually... Not that I can tell, no. And Evelyn, your stepmother. Your mother. I call Jesse. Uh, a bio mom, but she's the only mom I need. Only mom I want. Of course, I have always believed that your family is chosen. It's it's not the ones that you're born with. What about her? Uh, I I just know that uh, she, she's a relatively recent addition to the to the house, um, but nothing. Oh no, we've always we've been with her since I was seven. Oh, okay. I, again, I apologize. I must have. Uh, That's okay. The, out of character. It's something I probably I probably screwed up the timeline on. It's fine. I'm I'm like kind of lightheaded too, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, um, well, listen. I, I'm I'm gonna let you get back to your homework. Uh, and I look over. What is he? Is he doing homework? Because he's drawing. What is, He's doing, um, he's doing homework. It looks like he's uh, writing out some some uh, algebra problems. Are you? What your, what's your favorite subject in school now? Wait, algebra. Algebra. Are you an artist at all? I, mean, uh, I, I can draw I stick figures hella good. <laughs> oh, my oh. sister can draw. She's she's good. She's gonna be good. Yes, yeah, so, so she showed me some of her drawings. She was. And, uh, I could I could see the raw talent there. Have you noticed anything odd uh, in the house at all before the incident? Like within the home. I mean, just apart from those couple times where I heard her moving around and somebody else moving around, or I, I mean, I couldn't have been anybody else. She was the only one up there. I don't know. The house makes noises sometimes, I guess. I'm going to let you get back to your algebra, but uh, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Hopefully we won't have to bother you anymore than we already have. Um, but uh, I look over the homework just and smile back and uh, start to make my exit. Okay. Yep, Evelyn's there when you open the door and uh, says, are you, you, you all about finished? Yes. Uh, is uh, my colleague downstairs still? I think he actually went outside to join the, the rest of your group. I'll be on my way then. Uh, again, thank you for so much for taking time out of your day to to accommodate us. I know that it's been an interesting uh, turn, uh, turn of events, uh, and I hope that it wasn't too, too chaotic all of us being here. And a little unusual, but I mean, I guess that's how the feds do things. Um, but call us if they you have any other questions. Sure that, of course, yeah. We just, they just always just want to make sure that everyone uh, is safe. Given the current uh, heated political climate and everything, of course, yeah. Yes. Uh, and I start to, I smile, and I start to make my way downstairs. And as Emily is walking downstairs, uh, Victor's at the front door, uh, still talking to Tim. Uh, anyway, here's my idea. I'm just spitballing here. Um, Seawall between Florida and Gulf of Mexico. Victor. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and I'm like at the, like not the base steps, like the, the middle of the steps and I overhear them. Uh, I just give that kind of like uh, that uh, authoritative smile, um, trying to keep uh, a, a kindly presence in front of everyone, but sort of, but also staring daggers at him. Oh, um, 
Yeah, I I go check on computer and I uh, I leave. Well, uh, Timothy, Evelyn, again, thank you so much uh, on behalf of the agency, myself. Um, you have some wonderful, wonderful children. They're good kids. We're lucky. Uh, I'm sure uh, Agent Coldwell gave you his contact information just in case anything else happens. Okay. Um, I'm just actually going to give you my card um, just in case uh, any of the children reach out or have any questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, good evening. And I start to make my way out. And as soon as I cross the threshold and I shut the door, I go from warm to cold. I just kind of like dead-eyed go towards the cars. Hey, what's the next step, folks? Well, Victor's going to collect the information that he got about Sarah and um, take a picture of it and text the picture to uh, the other people on the list. Oh, what's the information? The information was that um, Sarah was an employee with the Chicago Police Department. You're not exactly sure in what capacity. Uh, however, she was medically retired uh, nine years ago. Okay. Okay, so uh, do we all just kind of swap information at this point? Get each other um, caught up? Should we I mean, meet I've... back at the hotel? Uh, yes, it's just, uh, let's do a roundup at the hotel. About probably four or five o'clock in the evening. Okay. And I pop into my car and head off. You wanted to do okay. on the way back? I don't think so. So yeah, we'll pick up with you guys getting back to the, uh, back to the uh, airport, or I'm sorry, the hotel. And uh, it's still, the, the conference is still in full swing. And it now, only now that it's kind of closer to the end of the day, there are a bunch of inebriated real estate agents uh, loitering about the lobby. So um, that is a minefield you would want to navigate as quickly as possible, more than likely. Emily is just barreling through. Um, she ha Even though it's like almost dusk, she's got her glasses on, just avoiding eye contact with all these sh just schmucks. This is a good way to put it, yeah. Okay. Y'all meet in uh, anybody's room in particular? Do y'all think we should go to like a diner or something and get some food while we talk this over? I, myself, am starving. Is this the sort of thing we want to talk about in public? Well, I wasn't thinking we would do it in a crowd place and use our outside voices. I think we could probably just have a conversation <laughs> at a table without other people hearing it. I mean, sure. I don't really care, sure. Glad, fair enough. I just want a burger, you know? <laughs> let's get a burger. Gosh, I like you, Joe. Let's do it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go get changed. I don't want to get to eat burger grease on you. There's a bunch of stuff nearby. Um, and yeah, I make my way to my room because I am still wearing all white and I'm going to get in something a bit more uh, appropriate for a diner, um, which is still like a nice pantsuit, but darker colors. She brings out her fancy bit. My evening pantsuit. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. Um, five guys. You've got like a TGI Fridays. You've got, uh, you know. Five guys. Yeah. Five guys. Greasy and salty. <laughs> Let's do it. Love five guys five guys uh this is not an endorsement for five guys <laughs> listeners we just really like good hamburgers oh no they <laughs> sent me money just the other <laughs> <laughs> if they'd like to send us money yeah yeah right free yeah. advertising why not all right so you guys head down you can probably walk uh it, it's close enough to the to the five guys so okay yeah Gus gets two burgers do they sell milkshakes out of Five Guys? I've never been. We sure do. And they're amazing. The best milk. Yes. Yes. He gets some peanut butter. You can mix like all different flavors. It's really Again? good. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Okay, he gets two burgers, a milkshake, and a fry. Right on. Bag of fries. Giant bag of fries. 
come in like black <laughs> they come in like the brown yeah. the brown paper bags like the <laughs> it's amazing Ooh. So we're gonna take you oh they have them here they're all over the place i'm just allergic to peanuts oh uh, shoot but shoot. gus is he's the man i always <laughs> wanted to be <laughs> <laughs> no peanut allergy for him <laughs> like me but with no weakness yeah exactly <laughs> love it god bless rpgs uh, <laughs> uh i'm keeping my my uh she on and uh the fluorescent light is doing nothing to help anyone's action, but i will stay uh and uh talk if that is what everyone else wants to do here i'm sure uh victor is having the time of his life uh with all these cheeseburgers and french fries Oh yeah. Um, oh, first thing I ask when I get there is that do you do you have beer? I do not, unfortunately, sir. I, I, uh, all right. Give me a hamburger, uh, uh, cheese, bacon, uh, big fries, uh, strawberry shake. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. I was surprised you didn't call him a suka or anything like that. <laughs> You guys talking shop? You uh, what's the story? I, I mean, I guess we're fighting with like the furthest tucked away booth and uh, watching Augustus and Victor and Joe eat while we discuss what happened. Okay. Uh, Gus like holds out his burger towards you. Didn't get anything, did you, Doctor Morass? No, uh, yeah. I'll eat later. I'll eat later. Okay, he's holding out a burger to you, like ma. I'm a vegetarian. Ma? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Sarah a gets a, bur- a chicken away. burger, but that's it. <laughs> Fix at it. What was that, Jill? All right, so eat yourself. Some fries. You're vegetarian. Um, I'll eat later, thank you. All right. I drink out of my milkshake lightly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What did we find today? So we need to locate that ex-wife, yeah? We do. Yeah. That seems like the first thing I need to do. Did uh, did Timothy or Evelyn respond to you when I sent you that text about sweetness? They did. Um, apparently that was the uh, pet name that their biological mother used to call. What is sweetness? Why is that significant? I uh, reach into my back pocket, my, my back pants, my back pants pocket, and uh, I unfold uh, what looks like just a bunch of uh, pieces of paper. Some of which that have writing and purple crayon, uh, but the other one is in the uh, uh, the very bottom of them uh, is the drawing of Catherine with the, the dark figure. Catherine found this figure, uh, or this figure found Catherine. Uh, it referred to herself as sweetness. Huh. That was what Sarah called them. That's what Tim said, yeah. And according to Catherine, the figure does seem feminine, though she doesn't know what it looks like or where it lives. The figure, though, has told Catherine that she will be joining her very soon. She said this the night of the fire. And apparently, according to Tim, she wasn't always, his ex-wife wasn't always uh, the way that she was at the end. It was a sharp turn. She used to be a collected person. Uh, and it seemed like she kind of spiraled out of control. Her brother, Chad, too, said that he heard when he was babysitting his younger sister, uh, another figure in the house moving around. Um, but of course, when he checked on her and it was only Catherine so whatever figure that Catherine uh, is referencing in this drawing logical reasonings uh, it's, it's, you know, these two are one and the same and there's some connection there's obviously some connection with the mother especially if this creature is calling uh, is being called was it called sweetness or was it calling Catherine sweetness 
by itself as sweetness. Is it identifying itself as sweetness? Is, is the figure in the drawing larger or smaller than Catherine? Uh, adult size. It's adult size. Okay. Like looking at it, like, you know, with, with uh, you definitely, it's distinct to the child and who the adult is. All right. So what do you think? You think maybe the wife gets into some occult shit, it warps her mind a little bit, maybe changes her, now she's back to get... Did you find anything else about uh, Sarah? Other than her sudden turn into insanity? He didn't really have much else to say. He said that the last time he saw her was when she... Uh, cut and burned the kids said she was completely incoherent uh, when she got sentenced she got sentenced to some some sort of rehabilitation classes maybe we should see if we can find the information from those uh, Victor do you think you can uh, get us access to those files I I can look around I see what I can do that might be helpful information uh, but other than that he doesn't really know know anything about uh, what happened to her, where she went. He said he basically just left her behind, tried to forget all. Did he men make mention of anything that the kids said or, or any reactions they had towards this abuse? No, not really. He said that uh, uh, they have kind of slotted Evelyn into the, the role of mother from this point forward. Um, and that they were obviously upset by their mother, uh, mother's actions and their mother's disappearance. They've kind of grown to uh, to see Evelyn as their new mother. They don't really speak about uh, about Sarah much. They don't speak about her at all. Joe, does this sound? Does this? Does anything like this click in your head? You seem to be knowledgeable in these sort of esoteric things. Um, I mean, do I know of any, but I know I know very little about the cult, but is there any sort of maternal connection that signed up, sort of clicks that I would connect with or no? Really? Um, for, for you, like the, the vast majority of, of the occult knowledge that you have, like shadow figures are, are pretty common occurrences in, in, um, occult literature and in, in stories, uh, especially like involving sleep paralysis, uh, you know, shadow figures sure. showing up and, and hovering over people and they can't move. And um, sometimes, you know, okay, especially with like more religious slanted um, occult writings, uh, they're indicative of demonic activity, but nothing to hint at a singular source. Okay. I mean, not with cult directly, Normally, I would assume that this is some sort of demonic interference, but I have enough details to go off of anything more than that. You guys don't really believe all this occult bullshit, do you? Do you? I, come on. These, clearly, these are uh, tall black aliens. You've heard of these, yes? The aliens? Yes. The tall blacks, they're related to gray, mean... but they are bigger and, and they're blacker. There's a group of young African-American males uh, no. sitting a few tables over who immediately start looking back at the weird Russian guy saying blacker. <laughs> Gus just gives them a big wave and a smile. Oh, the cop gives them a big wave and a smile. Great. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a cop. You talking about? Uh, or says that? Uh, you're talking about aliens, not about something yeah. else, right? Cause... Yes, from, from outer space. I mean, come on now. Like, Everybody I'm... heard of the Greys, right? Black, that's what she's trying to be like. They're not talking about black people. She's talking about them. He's talking about something else. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're talking about? Okay, yeah. Maybe whatever it is you are talking about, you should your voice down a little bit. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Don't make me try to say things like that again. It doesn't work out. 
well, wh whatever this is, uh, extraterrestrial, demonic, otherwise, spiritual, we need to find the mother. We need to find out more about her. Yeah, Victor, I agree. Victor does give you all the address that he was able to find for her um, current residence. Oh, okay. Well, then. Yeah. We should go there. In Chicago? Yeah. Can we. In. You broke up the Kimmy. I was saying, shouldn't we stay in Tampa? What if we leave, but she's actually here and it happened again while we're Yeah. Done. Yes, I'm inclined to agree. Yeah, I wasn't going to say all of us should go to Chicago, but somebody should go and check her place out. Is it perhaps... Make an intelligence check, Victor. Is it perhaps maybe not best to just send a detail out to uh, her other place of residence to just to scope it out, make sure that she or anyone is actually living there. Who am I supposed to send the detail to? I can't tell them to look for the stuff that we need to look for. Victor, I'll take you I'll get take care of it. Victor, you uh, with your background and what you know, you're wondering if if maybe putting cameras up in the house might be useful. Oh, of course, yes. No, I uh, I even have some cameras uh, with me. Putting cameras up in the house in Chicago? No, no, no. In here, in uh, Tampa. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah. Putting our own security up, just in case. Mm. Um, uh, Vince, I text uh, you-know-who uh, to let them know. Uh, I, give this just an, uh, I do give him just an address and say, can you check, uh, can you check this for me? Um... Krantz, uh, the your case officer. No, no, no. My my uh, bond. Yep. Okay. I'm tracking. Okay. You you, you text it to him. Yes. Sarah Garrison's address. Yes, and I just I just ask, please, uh, uh, can you check up on on this address? See who's who's there. Yeah. Uh, I... yeah he says. Uh, <laughs> he sends you a text back. Uh, um, well, nice to hear from you too. I'll uh, see what I can find out. I don't respond. <laughs> I just do like the, the, the double click and oh wait, that, I don't know if that, was, that functionality was introduced in 2016. If it was, I will just double click the thumbs up uh, thing that comes up on my phone. <laughs> and put my phone away. Okay, so I should catch a flat tonight and then come back early in the morning or what's the... Don't go yet. Uh, I have someone checking up on it. Uh, once they know what's going on, they'll let me know, and we can take action from there. In the meantime, Victor, you were saying something about cameras? I guess. I mean, uh, simple surveillance ca cameras we could set up in, uh, all over the place. Should have how thought you, of that earlier. Well, how do you, at this point, uh, figure we enter the home without disturbing them again? We, I mean, we have to ask, but... Uh, Maybe it's possible to uh, mount one on, on tree in the neighborhood. You mean put them up so that they're looking at the house rather than put them up in the house? Yes, I mean, I have a zoom function, you look through windows, that sort of thing. I have a thermal in imaging camera, may, uh, may be perfect for this application, I do not know. Handler. Uh, the handler. Yes. Um, uh, did Catherine have any kind of like computer or webcam or anything like that in her room? I doubt she would, but just out of curiosity, or even like a, like a, some sort of like baby monitor thing. Yeah. Um. So so she did not. Uh. And you probably chalk that up uh, to the mom having like the law enforcement background. Um. You do not yeah. want your daughter having her own computer or webcam. So uh, looks like the family computer was all they really had. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I was just. Yeah, you know, there's some. There are some seven-year-olds. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, they just yell about Fortnite. But um, <laughs> okay, never mind. Should maybe one of us stake out the hat? Do it. Hurt. Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't mind yeah. doing the first watch if someone wants to come with. 
Uh, I can. Okay. I'm used to it. I can. So it's going to be Gus and Sarah? Yep. And whoever else wants to come, we can make a little part. Very quiet party. <laughs> no, no takers? Okay. I take a fry from Joe. <laughs> Warming up to her. I take half a bite. Oh, and that's a fry from. I'm not pleased by it. Take steps. Oops. I mean, one at a time. <laughs> one fry. I, I do see. Oh, go on. I can go with you guys and uh, and set up some cameras from outside. Get best angles that I can. Uh, keep focus on the children's room, specifically Catherine. Yeah. Do your cameras have any kind of like thermal technology? Anything that they have such have? camera? Yes. Perhaps it's not a bad idea to have in there, um, just in case it isn't able to capture anything in the low light. Yes, uh, the black aliens tend to run hot, so it's a good idea. I just silently nod. <laughs> uh, I love Victor. Don't you guys read internet? What's the matter with that? so weird. Um, yeah, I'm, th those are my plans. I don't have anything else. Uh, uh, or those are Emily's plans, rather. I don't have any other things that, other than getting room service for her so that she can have salad. So we'll skip ahead a bit, and we'll we'll pick up with uh, with everybody kind of going their separate ways. Emily uh, and Joe, you guys are back in your rooms, and Gus, uh, Sarah, and Victor are at the house. Um, Joe, is there anything you wanted to do? Um, so probably stay up, try to do more research on. Picking up something <laughs> awful. Yeah, it's going on. Um, Emily will just uh, order that room to her salad. It's probably terrible, but it's, you know, whatever. Okay, um, but now? A little better. Yeah. Um, okay, and then, so, so she... Th wait, oh, sorry. No, no, sorry. I see we're talking. Uh, no, I was just saying, she gets her salad. It's not great, but, she, you know, it's serviceable. Um, she gets some, some wine in her, and she just puts... Uh, uh, some more entry into her journal uh, for the day. Um, and just kind of like waiting on the, the text from him. What were you saying? Uh, she's going to do as much more research as she can into the cult, specifically now anything with like animal blood related to it, anything like that. Uh, but if not, she'll just. Okay. Um, um, I'm sorry, Handler. I also want to do, I do want to check two things uh, online, see if I can find like essays on it or anything like that, that like spark my interest or seem relevant. I want to check on like astral projection. Okay. And then I want to check like cross-reference specifically rituals involving children and like ritual abuse or mm -hmm. sacrifice or anything like that. Sure, I'll get like stuff for the for the Mayans and the Aztecs, but um, I want to like comb through that and, and, and focus on more like the Greeks and uh, um, the Mediterranean area. Um, so, Joe, initially uh, with your search, uh, you, you do find kind of parsing together that information. You do find plenty of indications that uh, these Greek cults, these Greek religions, animal sacrifice is pretty much a multiple times a day, daily kind of thing. Um, nothing to indicate like specific types of animals or specific uh, rituals they were involved in. Um, just while praying to certain gods or seeking the favor of certain gods, they would sacrifice animals um, to to augment the, the the strength of their their prayer and their their proselytizing kind of thing. So, concrete directly to the core cult, though. Okay. Uh, so Emily. Um, you do find a bunch on astral projection. Typically, unfortunately, not a lot um, 
that is uh, like academic in nature, like no like academic theses or white papers or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of the stuff you do find is is like um, kind of step by step guides on how to quote unquote astrally project yourself if you focus enough and um, you kind of induce it by you know, lots of like theoretical theoretical writing and magical exactly yeah um, nothing specifically related to children just that uh, some say that children may be more apt to do it because their imagination is not as hampered as adults. Um, really to you and to your psychotherapy, uh, your, your, you know, your, your training, it just sounds like they're inducing certain types of lucid dreaming, um, as opposed to actually mm-hmm. projecting their spirits from their bodies. Um, but that's really the bulk of what you can find. Okay. And then the, uh, ritual abuse, uh, specifically related to children in the Greek or Mediterranean? Nothing concrete. Um, occasional children, you know, use the sacrifices, um, you find, uh, information related to like uh, especially in some of the more militaristic societies like the spartans uh, pederasty or or uh, children being raised as soldiers um especially with the spartan regime stuff like that okay with our intrepid uh federales and uh russian out in the uh back going back to the bernier house uh, what, what are you guys up to uh we need to basically start our stake out or making sure to keep. I wonder. Is it dark yet? What time did y'all want to head out there? Uh, probably when it's we'd... dark. Yeah, I think we'd wait until it. Probably nine, ten o'clock at night. So yeah, it's, it'll be dark. Okay. Can Sarah get on the roof? The house. Of the house. Here, um, are you gonna talk to anybody about it? Or? No, she's looking at it. And she's like, Do you think it'd be a good idea to see to like stay on the roof of the house? Do you want to come onto the roof of their house? I think just because, um, we're not just looking at the house itself. Well, are we looking at the house itself for more to see if anyone else vandalizes it, or are we looking especially in the um, at the actions of the people in the house? Uh, feedback on your mic there jack oh sorry so you you're you're saying we're not trying to look at the outside of the house we're trying to see inside the house i think she's that's what asking. the thermal camera. she's asking yeah. yeah i think that's what the therm- thermal camera is for I, honestly if you think you can get up there without anybody hearing you feel free but mm. i think it would be really hard for us to spin talk it. our way out of that if you got caught you know yeah all right, then we'll just watch over the outside of the house. I use the cameras and keep an eye on the cameras. All right. Victor, you're easily able to set up a camera looking at the front of the residence. Um, there is a uh, light post adjacent to the home that gives you access to a power source and an elevated position to mount the camera to. So that's easy enough. All right, I'll I'll put it, attach it there with some zip ties and, and aim it. Uh, can I aim it at Catherine's window? Uh, let me see. Let me check the floor plan real quick. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, you should be able to. Yeah, it's one of the front-facing uh, windows. All right, that's what I'll do. And then I should be able to monitor that from my uh, computer. Yep. Uh, going back to Jack. Jack, you get a phone call. Emily? Yes. And it is uh, Mr. Serafini. Hello. Hey, um, uh, it's it's Tony. Uh, yes. Did you find anything? I I gotta ask, what do you need this for? Uh, I'm checking on a, a patient. Uh, they've not returned any of my emails. I'm sure, that patient is safe. Is she one of yours? Yes, Tony. She's one of mine. She was one of ours. Well, uh, again, I, you know I can't. So, uh, again, I just need you to check up. Yeah, she's there. She lives there. She's still paying the rent there. I, I, haven't sent she... any, I haven't sent anybody by the house to check it out, but she's she's still receiving the mail there. She's still uh, paying utilities there. So you mean mail is still coming there, but you've not sent anyone out there to confirm that there's a body. Is that correct? Well, yeah, no, you didn't tell me that. You thought that there was a that we were doing a health and wellness check. 
Tony, I need you to check and see if she is there and present. Send somebody out. Um, I mean, what is this all about, Em? Tony, don't don't do this right now. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, well, uh, until you can give me some more details, Tony. Uh, listen, Em, I'm not wasting Uni's time to go out there and check on something. Why then? Why don't you go out there yourself and do it? Because I'm off. I give the long, cold pause. Well, if you're in town, why don't you go and check on her? She's your patient. I'm not in town. Well, it sounds like a you problem, darling. You would have known had you been home the night you weren't. You were on patrol. So again, I'm asking you to go check up on her yourself. Be a big boy. And I hang up the phone. <laughs> All right. Drama. All right, so uh, f fast forward a little bit to the group. Um, Victor, go ahead and make me an alertness roll. Cool, boy. Uh, alertness. Is th that's a skill? Is awareness or alertness? Um, okay. Uh, alertness. Alertness. Hee, <laughs> boy. Nice. Okay. Did I make it? Yeah, you made it. Uh, so you rolled a twelve out of twenty. Oh. So you rolled you rolled under twenty. So you made it. Gee, nice. Yeah, Victor. Victor's a, a, a method of alertness is uh, playing on his phone all the time. So <laughs> he's like playing on his phone. I was like, oh shit, what's that? Is your thermal camera is it black, white, hot, or is it is it like um, uh, multicolored? It's multicolored. catch a cold spot flash by uh inside the house um <laughs> yet yeah gus gus come quick yeah yeah uh, sarah these um something cold up there sheet is not it's not a uh, black alien oh shit Yes, in Catherine's room. Sir, you think you can get up? Now you want me to climb? Oh. Well, now we know something's in there. I can give it a shot. I can't. Hers is the front-facing house, right? And it's still dark? It's dark. And the lights are all off in the house. Looks like everybody's asleep. It's about probably there... closer to midnight. Okay, so it gives me a, put, gives me a hand and spots me. I can do it. Is there, just to make sure though, uh, there's not like a lamp, like outside? There the are street lights. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a well-lit street. Hmm. Uh, do any of the houses in the neighborhood have their lights? Lights and stuff? Yeah, like their, their home lights. Does it look like anybody's awake or is the street? A couple here and there, a few houses down, but nobody immediately adjacent to the residence. Um... Is there any way we could either be technologically savvy enough to turn off one of the streetlights in front of the house? Any uh, I mean, cutting wires, but I have to get to them. These why these these lights aren't completely controlled by computer downtown, are they? Uh, I was looking up some of the security, but I don't know. Don't know if I got anything. Uh, n nothing to indicate the public infrastructure or anything like that. Look, 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 um, back of house is next to pond, back the drainage pond, uh, it's darker there. Okay. Let's try climbing there. I, I'll need someone to give me a bit of a boost. We're going to go around the back. Yeah. Okay, so I'll need you and whoever's going with you to roll stealth. It'll be me, probably. I stay here and watch camera. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, oh, that's not, oh, uh, Six out of seventy. That's a failure. Um, yeah. So you... guys, I have a ten still. Jesus. <laughs> oh no. A 50, yeah. Fifty-four <laughs> out of ten. Yeah. But um, you know, at the end of the game, I'll have an eleven still. So there's that. 
Oh, yeah, sorry. Well, I'm right now. You go, yeah. you go trying to run around the side of the house, and uh, as, as you're moving, you, your foot trips on something. You're not exactly sure what it is, Sarah, but you, you hit the deck hard, and uh, you bang your knee, and, and pr- involuntarily, without even thinking about it, you let out a sharp, fuck! And <laughs> Gus trips over you just as badly. Okay, that happens. And so at this point, I look at Gus and I'm just like, look at the house. And I just try to make myself into a dark corner just to make sure no one can see me out from the window. And I wait and I listen real hard. Some lights turn on inside. Uh, I'm going to go up to the front door uh, and, and knock on it. Oh no, I'm hiding. I'm straight oh up God. not doing it. <laughs> the front door knock on it? Yep. Are there bushes? Can I hide in bushes? Uh, yeah, but with that self check, your like, top of your head is hanging out outside of the bush. Uh, it's dark, so she not... has dark hair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sarah, Sarah, just come with me. I didn't hear you. Just come with me, trust me. Okay. Yeah, he kn- yeah he knocks. Um, it's obviously not, not like not like bang knocks, but he does knock on the. It definitely takes a few minutes, um, but you see the lights are coming on inside the house. You hear somebody coming down the stairs, and Tim... he knocks one more time to kind of get them to hurry. Yeah, Tim Tim opens Jay. the door. He's like, Gus, what the what? What are you doing here? Tim, can you go check? Can you go check on your daughter's room, please? What what is this about? Go check on your daughter's room for me, please. Uh, yeah, and he'll go back upstairs. I'll leave the door open. Um, hear some muffled conversation, and he comes back down the stairs. Says uh, she's in bed. What the fuck do you want? She was awake. Yeah, she was awake. She was reading. What time is it? This is me asking you, Ben. Yeah, it's it's about midnight. How old is she again? She's like... She's, she's 10. She was reading at midnight. Okay, so... Tim, we decided to kind of keep an eye on your house, just in case. We've been sitting outside, keeping a watch on it, to see if those teenagers that wrecked your door... Uh, we saw someone we couldn't really identify heading towards your daughter's room. So I decided to come and knock on the door and get you... Someone in the house? No, I can't see inside your house. Outside the house towards the front of your daughter's window. Now, Tim, don't you think it's a little weird that your daughter was awake? Oh, she, sometimes when she can't sleep, she reads until she falls asleep. That's fair enough. Uh, why would someone be around her window? If... I don't know, but I'm going to... We're going to pull her into our room and she's going to sleep there. I think that's a very good idea, Tim. Now, before I told you that... commenting on my parenting, Gus. Now, what the fuck else do you want? It's midnight, and you all are scaring the shit out of my family. Okay. I understand that you're upset. I wasn't making a commenting on your parenting. I was making a commenting on the fact that I think it's a good idea to have her sleep with you because I think that maybe your ex-wife might be around now. I know before I said that you wouldn't or shouldn't be worried about it that much, but I'm starting to get a little... I think she might be it. Oh, fuck. That's why I was outside your house, and that's why we were watching. All right, well, we'll move Catherine into our room. Are you all going to be out here all night? Yeah, I'm definitely not. Definitely not going in. Yeah. Hey, Tim, can you give me your phone number and so I can just call you? Next time I see something and wake you up rather than your. Yeah, here, here you go. He'll give you his phone number. All right, thank you very much. I do apologize for disrupting you, but I thought it was serious enough to wake you up. I wouldn't have done it. Other... Yeah, okay. Okay, keep your eyes peeled. Good night. Good night. 
he turns as soon as the door is shut, he turns to Sarah with like a Ooh, look on his face. <laughs> Lots smoother than I could have done it. Okay, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. That was that was awful. That was so bad. <laughs> yes it was. Yes it was. Ow. Fuck. Yeah, no no more sneaking, huh? We're not good. You gonna... fucking fell on me, you're big. Ow. You fell first. You tripped me. You get mad at me for falling on you when you tumble head over heels right in front of me. I thought you had better replaces than that. And she's kind of holding her side because you fell and you <laughs> need her in the side. And I'm not big. I just had a couple of burgers and a milkshake. Okay. You're, I'm five foot. You're six foot. Hi. Uh, six foot one. Emily, you get another phone call from Mr. Serafini. Hello? Yeah, hey babe. Um, yeah, she's living there. She's living there. What do you mean, wreck? She doesn't look good. She looks sick. Thank you. Uh, did you check any ID or? Uh, well, no. It was just whenever I knocked on the door, just asked for Sarah Garrison. She said yes, and. Asked if she was all right. She said fine, then told me to fuck off. All right, thank you. Look, I'm sorry for being a dick before. I just... I love you. You know that, right? Yes. Yes, I do. Good night. Uh, no. I'm just going to try and get some rest. All right. Good night. Good night. So what exactly happened? We saw the cold spot. Um, there was noise. Lights went on. Did the did we see the cold spot like move in and then move away? Uh, did it like disappear when the lights went went on? What happened there? Make make another alertness check. Ooh, I mean, I would probably have this on uh, video, right? want to see if you spot it because it would be there there's a variation okay um if, uh, it's, i would i would probably show this to the others as well i would bring them back and show them okay. what i saw yes uh, you mean so the... i don't know if it, if it makes sense for somebody else if there's only one role if it makes sense for somebody else to make that role um, no, we, so uh, th what all this, this will be is cause you, you notice the initial, the initial burst, uh, the initial cold spot. This will just be the same mm -hmm. if you notice anything else following that, especially after Sarah fell. Um, all right. Cool. Uh, so, okay. uh, no, yeah, yeah that's nothing, big failure. nothing that you can that see, um, but you can, you can absolutely have Gus or Sarah review the footage, um, and see if they, they notice anything. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I will definitely will go, on, and this right here, this is where it first appeared. You can see it, it's like spot. Is it uh, humanoid shaped, or is it just around? It was more of a blur, kind of past the window. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, do you want us to make alertness checks? Yeah, make, make, yeah, go ahead and make it, just you, Gus, make, a, make an alertness. Why just Ugh. Gus? Oh. What happens on a critical? Well, because, oh my goodness. because he's just reviewing footage, nothing, but typically, like, th this would be, this a critical failure could be pretty bad. Um, you get the nosebleed. But at this, at this <laughs> point, Gus, since you've been going so long, you are now exhausted. Oh, what does that mean? Is that a, is that a, does that have a mechanical thing? Oh, sorry, I forgot we were doing this as a podcast. Does that have a mechanical thing? Yeah, right, it does. Um, <laughs> you have a negative 20% pen penalty to all skills, stat tests, and sand tests, and you lose 1d6 willpower. Ooh. Ooh, I lose 1d6 Temporarily? Permanently or until I sleep? Until you sleep. Yeah, on your sheet, there's if you click all, there's an injuries status thing, and you can check exhaustion on there. All alertness since you're looking at it with them. All right. Why are we rolling like shit tonight? Nothing. You, you'd see that initial cold spot that Victor pointed out, but you see nothing after that. Um, if you are going to keep going, all, if you are going to keep going all night, both Sarah and Victor will also be exhausted. 
And at this point, I, Sarah will go take a nap, go actually sleep, because she knows if she's exhausted, she's useless. Hey, now that we've got that camera set up, maybe we should all go get some shut eyes so we can get fresh eyes on this in the morning. Yep. I'm, I'm for that. If I don't sleep, I'm useless. Sounds good to me. Okay, is there any way, Victor, that you can set it up to kind of ping you if there's a change in temperature in one in one location of the thing? I'm sorry, I'm not really a technology guy. I'm more of a yeah. Guy. I mean, I uh, is there a way that I could set that up? There I should, would think that would be there should be yeah. Um, just uh, you can set up so there's an audible ping whenever there's a, a temperature change on a specific on uh, on the camera. All right, so I'll set it up to uh, to send a, a text message to me. He will get a lot of false positives as the temperature changes throughout the night because it is set up outside. So, like, if you get okay. if you get wildlife running past the house, it's gonna it's gonna trigger that. So you probably won't get very much sleep. Couldn't he have it set up so that it would be a, a number of degrees below if there's a change in below temperature, or would it just have to be a variation in? That, that's, that would kind of, he could yeah he could set up uh yeah he could set it up so that way if, if it's a certain uh yeah yeah maybe yeah. just brought, like reference the temperature that you saw when you saw the figure and then just yeah looking for a drop in temperature got it yeah so it's about a 15 20 degree change so if you if you yeah put that into your into your your criteria you can do that say for right. for the sakeness of uh moving things along uh you all are able to get sleep. Uh, Gus, uh, did you roll 1d6 for your loss? I clicked the injury uh, status effect on the thing. Did that not do it for me? It did not. Yeah, just just roll a 1d6 real quick. Okay. Roll a 1d6 for recovery. So it's for... So I do the same. Ugh. So five is the five, yep. first one. And then you want me to do another one? It'll be for you getting a full night's sleep. Well, butthole. Well, okay. Sarah's fine. She see, bounces back. So you recover. You recover too. Um, so willpower points is what I lost, right? Yes. Okay, so I went down to... Okay, I went down to eight. Now I'm back up. Okay, I'm up to... T- okay. What happens when I hit zero? What happened was you are... Oh, I think if you hit zero willpower, you are catatonic. Cool. An agent whose willpower hits one or two has an emotional breakdown. The agent suffers a negative 20% penalty to all actions until willpower rises above two. Um, running out of willpower points, an agent whose willpower hits zero collapses, completely incapacitated and perhaps unconscious. Okay. All right, so... That happens. Victor, uh, you get nothing on your camera for the rest of the night, uh, but everybody you meet up the next morning. Uh, I will share the video of uh, what what we saw last night with everybody. Okay, now with okay, I'm curious with uh, with Sarah's excellent stealth. Did she wake me up when she came and she woke your yeah. ass right up? I, I oh, am okay. Like... I wasn't the only one shitty at stealth. <laughs> uh, no, I think I first. Okay. What's that? I just said no. I think I rolled worse than you did. Compared to oh, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he got the critical. Um, no, he. Go on. Sorry. Sarah. Yeah, I'm here. No, oh, I thought you were just saying something. Sorry. Oh no. Uh, so y'all are meeting up. What's the game plan? Uh. And we review the footage as well, see if there's anything we spot. Absolutely, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay, so so Joe and Em make your alertness checks. All right, alert. Only got 20%. Come on. Oh, yeah, same. Not my strong point. Nope. And both of us. Both 27 out of 20. Yeah, nothing. You see that initial cold, cold patch on the footage, but that's it. Uh, well, as I sip on my black coffee, uh, which tastes terrible, it's absolutely terrible. Um, yeah, it's quality in coffee. It's not very quality. I, I can't get a good, decent cup of coffee to save my life, apparently. Um, 
the uh, the ex-wife, the mother, Sarah. Uh, according to my contact, she is still alive and still in Chicago. Oh. Okay, well, someone needs to go and talk to her. She was not forthcoming. Uh, according to my contact, she was very disheveled. Her apartment was in shambles. And when he did do try to do a wellness check on her, she told him to fuck off. And because there okay, well. are currently no outstanding warrants, he has no agency, he has no authority to enter the premises without her consent. That is correct, yeah. Hmm. I still think it's worth a shot. I mean, there's an offhand chance that I can get her to kind of tell me something. I don't really know what to do down here. I don't know what good I'm doing. Well, it's been one day. I mean, give yourself a break. Yeah, but it's a little girl. She's in trouble. I want to do something. I don't know if she's there in anything... trouble anything. Oh, sorry. I don't know if she's in trouble just yet. Yeah, I guess it's a bit of a thing to leap to, but I don't think it's... There's definitely an... Uh... There's a relationship, a bond that's formed between the two of them, sweetness and her. Whether that's uh, that it's, it's a genuine bond of affection or whether she's just trying to lure the, the young girl in, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like there's been any, any traction. I, and I still, I'm still not finding a connective thread between her presence and the fire and the the vandalism of the, those weird marks. Uh, how many, uh, and this isn't, I'm not trying to be aggressive here, but how many of these um, cases have you have you dealt with so far, Doc? What kind of cases? Unusual ones. I've had my share. How about do you? Them, do many of them turn out? No, they didn't. No, they don't. How many have you been on, Agent Coldwell? Mm -hmm. Enough to be very worried. Don't mistake my my current attitude for not being worried about the child. I am. But I can only go with what we've seen and what they've told us. And so far, the creature has not appeared, or whatever entity uh, has not been engaging with Catherine beyond just speaking to her. Yeah, you don't like to jump to conclusions. I can respect that. If you do wish to go to Chicago, I will go with you. But I think we need to... Well, I think that we need to get the rest of those forensics results from... Uh, the Tampa Police Department before we make any uh, further decisions regarding. Those are going to take a couple of days. Yeah, those are going to take a few days. Just by, uh, from your experience with, with various local laboratories and you too, Joe, you know that those types of results, especially if there's a backlog, are going to take some time to get. And Brett knew that from watching way too much television. That's good because most people who watch television think we get it in 24 hours or less, which is not the case. Damn it, I've, I've watched SVU. <laughs> semen everywhere. Okay, there's an echo of semen. Uh, yeah. that, was, that was a good one. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. But, uh, uh, well, uh, some of us can go to Chicago, the rest of us can stay in Florida. Okay, um, and Emily, it's not like I don't want your company. I think having your sharp eyes there would be a good idea. However, you're the only one of us so far that's developed any sort of a bond with... I think it might be advantageous if you stayed here and kind of worked on that a little bit. Does that sound crazy, or do you want to let it cool off a little bit, give the parents some time to calm down, then go back in and ask for more? What do you mean calm down? 
Well, you know, having people around agitates him. We don't want to. We don't want to crowd him. He looks at Sarah. Kind of gives her like a side, like a little side eye. You know, having people around just agitates them. If we go in too often, they might think, you know, something, something scary's up. Who knows? Do I catch on to that, Handler? I yeah. give him a weird ass look. I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? If you're human, you catch that. Is there a deception skill in this thing? You guys can, if you want, you can make competing human checks. Uh, so, or let me see. Um, you know what? Yeah, uh, Gus, make hum- make it do a human roll, and then, um, or I'm sorry, a persuade roll, and then um, Emily do a human roll. I look at Gus and I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Ooh, I know I'm not good at good with people, but I haven't interacted with them. So what the fuck? You 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 picked up on that, Emily? Yeah, it was about the fact that we freaked them out by causing a ruckus outside of their house. Yeah, I'm but... just trying to keep that a secret from Doctor. Well, cats out his back mean, now. Didn't she already know because of the no. video? No, the video was just of the the bedroom. Window? He was showing them the cold. Okay. Well, cats out his back now. Isn't it? Cats out of what bag? What are you talking about? That was me and Sonya having our conversation. Oh, sorry. I thought you guys were talking in game. Uh, well, no, actually, I just, <clears throat> Sarah's I just, a lower voice. Just uh, cock my eyebrow up towards the both of them, looking them over, giving them a, a penetrating gaze. Uh, Agent Coldwell coughs into his hand a little bit and goes, "Well, anyways, I should probably look into booking a flight to Chicago. Who's gonna Who's gonna come with me again? You know what? If you want to come, go for it. Anyone can come. I'm not gonna tell anyone." I'll come with you if there's, I mean, if there's potential cult connections in Chicago, I'll come with you. That's a really good idea. Me and Joe, we're going on an adventure. Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to go book the flight. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. See you too. Nobody else is going. <laughs> Nobody else said anything yet, but yeah. Um, so Gus, because this is, so we're going to go over requisitions a little bit in Delta Green. Um, you have different categories of expenses and you can either request that your, your, whoever you work for pays for them in your cases it's the fbi um or you can use your, your own cash um so which would you guys like to do would you like to re- requisition that the fbi does it or would you like to have would you like to pay for it yourselves uh requisition probably uh, but also uh jack were you gonna uh, have dr Moraz push to come with us or no she's just staring at you both uh with her eyebrow cocked up but she doesn't she doesn't say I'm she doesn't push for it though she's He's okay. acquiesced. All right. So Did you want to come? Come, Dr. Moraz, or, or do you want to... Joe's right. She Ill. does have a bit more experience in the occult, and if she does buy anything like she'd had at the Bernier residence, that will prove a little bit more useful than just uh, speaking with Sarah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. I'll see you guys <laughs> So uh, what I'll need you to do, let me check something real quick because uh, there's different, uh, let me see here. Uh, let's check in real quick. So if it's accelerated, go ahead and roll me a charisma times five. So it's got to be your, it's got to be under, what's your charisma score there? Me? Yeah. My charisma score is uh, 16. 80, so it's got to be under 80. So you got a pretty good chance of success. So roll that. Uh, so roll uh, D100 and we'll see. What Don't the is. say that. Yeah, I did that. You're able to easily um, get the tickets through, uh, have the FBI pay for the tickets uh, for the same day. Um, and because Joe is also an FBI employee, you kind of, two, two birds and one stone. So you guys are fine. Uh, you're able to get the FBI to pay for those expenses. Oh, yeah. Dream team. <laughs> yeah. let's drink a little bourbon on the flight <laughs> hell yeah let's have fun <laughs> you're able to get uh, tickets for the same day uh, later on in the afternoon uh, direct shot to Chicago O'Hare okay and I want to get a return flight as pretty much as quickly as possible yeah, yeah. Or do we want to save the purchase of the return flight for for after we've figured out how long we need to stay Let's wait, because we might find something that 
Let's wait. We might find something that may need some more time to look into. All right, that works. Fine. So, um, you do guys... they share their flight itinerary, or do you talk to the team about that? I think he'll uh, give the flight itinerary to Joe and <laughs> avoid speaking to Doctor Moraz as much as possible. <laughs> Are you scared of her or something? Well, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to lie to her. She just, like, sees right through you, you know? She's also very serious. She is. She is. She's a psychologist. She's damn good at her job. Yeah, she's very good at her job, which is why she freaks me out. I feel like she knows what I'm thinking. It's hilarious. She's probably taking notes on how freaked out you are currently. So... Don't tell me that. That's just going to freak me out more. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I'll share the uh, flight information with everyone so they know what flight we're on, when we're landing, when to expect to hear from us, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Dr. Luke. Of course. Until it looks like the, the flight takes off at four in the afternoon and lands uh, about uh, quarter to seven. Shot to Chicago O'Hare. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. McCarthy, for the itinerary. And I say that looking at uh, Augustus. You're welcome. I'm sorry, you, you said her name, but you're looking right at me. I was just a little... I turn and walk away. <laughs> All right. I think she likes you. Yeah, right. Yeah, me too. Anything you guys would like to do in the meantime, or do you want to fast forward to your arrival in Chicago? Um, Victor is going to uh, hit up uh, Best Buy and uh, get some more thermal Im imaging equipment to try and get like multiple angles. Um, let me see here. Let's see what that. So, are you going to be spending your own money, or are you going to be re requesting that? Through? Yeah, I, okay. I, I mean, I don't think I, as a contractor, I don't know that I have a way to really request. Uh, so I would spend my own money. All right, let me see uh, real quick. And looking online, I'm seeing like a, a decent thermal imaging camera for like 500 to 1,000. So we'll say that that is a, um, let me see here. That's a, we can, we'll make it a standard expense. Um, so go ahead and roll me an intelligence. Um, let me find it here. Roll a uh, intelligence sense five. So whatever your intelligence is, or what what's higher, your accounting or your intelligence? I'm pretty sure my intelligence. So roll whatever your intelligence sense five is, or just roll a d100. Nice. Hey. Able, you're easily able to make sure you've got the money to pay for it, and you're able to buy that, no problem. Okay. So I will uh, do that, and that way the... The uh, I have multiple angles on this room, trying to get better coverage from outside. Still from outside, unless anybody can think of a way that we can get inside. But even if we get inside, these cameras are not like you know pinhole cameras. They're they're not something you could hide. They're kind of big, yeah. Yeah, I know you're being detected. What was that? Good. Hmm. You like went weird and glitchy. Oh, sorry. Only for I, he was fine for me. Oh. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. I'm sorry. It was just me, I guess. Maybe it's yeah, the black, it's the black ones, the the black aliens come to get. They're interfering with the uh, signal. <laughs> They're on to me. All right, so we are. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, you guys cool fast forwarding to Chicago. Yeah, sure. Uh, before they do that, uh, Gus is gonna. Have a quick pow uh, conversation with Victor and go. Uh, remember to look into whether or not you can get those uh, the records from those uh, uh, rehabilitation classes they had. At. See if you can get your hands on them. The issue with that, uh, Victor, is is without knowing who she went through for that therapy, which you're not able to find. You're not. You don't exactly sure know who to target to try to get that information. Well, I don't actually know, like, 
what Victor's skill set would be. Would he be able to like uh, hack into the Chicago like court records? Is that like outside of his skill set? What do you, what do you, what do you think, Victor? Is I, that... I... I'll let Victor answer that one since that's more of a in character question. Um, sorry, I uh, was uh, looking at thermal cameras. So Gus was asking if, if, if you have the skill set required to potentially uh, hack into uh, local court records. Uh, court records? I mean, this is big ask, you know. Uh, I mean, these government, uh, they, you know, they, uh, they are w watching out for that sort of thing. I can try. I can try. Well, I don't want you to put yourself in, in any harm's way. If you don't think that you can pull it off or you think you'll get caught, definitely do not do it. I was just wondering... I guess I just don't know what your skill set is. I was wondering if it was outside your purview. I mean, the uh, best way to get out of records like this is from inside. But uh, no, I mean, I can uh, I can work on this. You will be gone for a day or two, right? Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, but maybe you I don't can... make a bad point. I could just stop by while I'm there, see if I can get my hands on it. It's probably a good idea, but uh, I will do what I can from the end. Perfect. We'll come at it from two angles. All right, that sounds good. Um, I mean, I think it, it, it's, it's, it, I don't know for sure how this this sort of thing would be done, but I mean, like cracking a, a court uh, system, which is supposed to be private, I think would would be a serious job. It would. Be. Oh yeah, that would take some time. Yeah. Well, I guess I don't know like how close to reality this world is. Like, is it? Is it? <laughs> Because you know what I mean, like in uh, in the X Files, it's supposed to be very close to reality. But if somebody needs to hack something, they just like tippy tap away at a computer or keyboard, and they've got it. Oh, oh so a little bit more realistic. Or... Yeah, well, oh, pardon me. I just type really fast on keyboard. I have yeah. answer in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, well, it, it, we don't have to go hyper realistic here, but but it will it will definitely require some some roles and uh, an extended period of time. Okay. Cool. Uh, so it's not, um, yeah, it's not super realistic, but it's also not that scene from like NCIS where two hackers are typing on the same keyboard. Yeah, like we're we're not re reconfiguring the mainframe in parallel or anything like that. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Sorry, continue. Cool. So, uh, so M, Sarah, was there anything you guys wanted to do? Um. Not particularly. I mean, I'll spend some time. I'll spend the off time uh, writing, uh, adding to my book, as well as uh, journaling. Um, it's pen and paper. Or are you doing this on your computer? No, I'm doing it on my laptop. And how much detail are you going into? Uh, as far as the book, the book itself isn't about my exploits. It's just about. Uh, uh, so, like, I'm using the, some of the experiences to inform it, but it's mostly just uh, more of a periodical. Got it. Um, I got it. Actually, I'd like to ask, um, would I know how to get the floor plans of the Bernier's house? Yeah, oh, you guys have them. You were able to pull those oh, up through, through tax records. Oh, okay. They should be in your handout. Okay, yeah. great. Sorry, I was just, I didn't realize. Uh, so I will just study those, and, um, she'll see about how get, uh, getting ways to be more, um, Getting some climbing gear from like a local hardware shop or something, or like a hiking shop or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a standard expense. So, uh, do you want to spend your own money on that? She'll expect to get reimbursed later by the agency, but yes. Okay. Uh, roll uh, intelligence sense. Uh, so just roll d one hundred uh, for your intelligence. Okay. That's good. Intelligence. Let's do it. Oh. Yeah, you definitely make it. Um, so yeah, you're able to find the money, no problem, to purchase your climbing gear. Okay. Great. All right. Wait, find the money? Like, you, you look at your expenses and, and you know, hey, uh, okay. yeah, so I've got, okay. I've got the... Be a hacker too, like, break it. Uh... It's like, you know, like taking a look at your expenses, making sure, do you have enough money on your credit cards without like maxing them out? Do you have enough money in your checking account? That kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So Joe and- This is climbing gear. Um, <laughs> the other thing 
that I wanted to do, uh, you had asked about the in-depth. The book itself is just a procedural. Uh, I'm using the strange elders' events to kind of inform, like uh, the how that affects the psychology, but not really like illustrating uh, or specifying, uh, you know, the kind of things that we're coming against. Uh, just kind of pondering about whether or not they're delusional or whatever. Um, the journal it does go into a little bit more detail, um, uh, and then I'm also going to send a text uh, to Anthony, uh, letting him know the estimated arrival time of uh, Joe Augustus and to keep eyes on them. Uh, I think that someone is uh, that, that someone is tracking the, uh, my patient. I just want to make sure that uh, she's all right uh, and that uh, there's nothing untoward happening. Uh, so, oh, so you told you told Serafini that there's people who are stalking your patient? Not stalking, but that 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 uh, that uh, she had communicated to me that died and and is uh, is worried that uh, uh, people have been checking up on her or are spying on her. So you texted it's a happened. cop and Tosh. told him to watch it. Yep. Oh, great! This is. <laughs> did, oh, did you give did you give him their arrival time? We don't know that. No, we don't. Graciously yeah. provided. <laughs> I just gave them. I gave Anthony about an hour, like a half estimate uh, as to when they would have been arrived. So like a half after they arrive, they they are scheduled to arrive at her home. Do you tell them who they are? No. Okay, I'm just confused. So you're saying people are showing up on my patient's residence? Yeah, I just want I just want to make sure that she's okay and that these these people uh, check out. You're clearing them. You're, you're just telling them that they're oh, okay. Oh, you sent us to check it out. You're not... Sorry, I, I was under the impression that you sent him a text that was like, these crazy people are bothering my client. Can yeah. you watch them and make sure they don't attack her? And I was like, he's gonna get... Her. No, I get it. I'm sorry. Okay, so I am... I am. That is my understanding, right, Jack? I'm understanding yeah. that right? Cool, okay. Yeah, um, sorry. Again, I've got a bit of a... We're good. I just want to make sure no, I'm understanding because I was going to I was going to take this scenario in a completely different direction. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm half tempted to do the other way. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um. Okay. So, uh, Gus and uh, Joe, you make it to um, uh, Chicago shortly before 7 p.m. in the evening. Pull up the map for you guys. You should be able to see it. Oh my god. I used to live in Logan Square. Nice. Hey. I've never been to Chicago. I've always wanted to go. Yeah, I think you'd like it a lot. Chicago. 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 No, that would be <laughs> It's going to be Joe the entire time. <laughs> yep. Hey. Some Chicago pizza. Hey. Go to Joliet. Chicago. <laughs> I do really want to see what a deep dish is all about. It's not Chicago pizza, man. Yes, I like where you're headed. It's tourist pizza. That's New York. I'm from Canada. I don't know. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, deep dish. <laughs> if you want the real Chicago pizza, you got to get the cracker crust, the tavern crust. What the hell is a cracker crust? Because that sounds great. It's like super thin. Oh, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, we're we're gonna gonna eat eat you're good. You're good. All right, federales. What are we doing? <laughs> That's you, Coldwell. I mean, do we want to head right there? Yeah, so I've got two things that I want to kind of cover while we're here. One, uh, go and talk to the crazy lady who pet and burned her kids. That one. Uh, number two, uh, yep. head to the courthouse and see if we can't get some uh, documents on her uh, rehabilitation set. Uh, Oh, I should have rehabilitation session. I should have mentioned this earlier, Gus, but you would know this with your with your training. You will need either a warrant or you will need a warrant to get those. I don't want the actual papers themselves. I think I just want uh, some information um, precluding to it. So if I can even get that, maybe like the name of the place that they sent her to, that might make it easier for Victor. To Unfortunately, you would, because that's protected under anything. yeah, that's protected under uh, health privacy information. Um, you would you, you would need a warrant just to get access to the fact that she received treatment. But what if I pointed my gun at them? That's how <laughs> cops get information. Yeah, work. we can roll with that. We can absolutely. Yeah. Roll with that. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like a plan. Uh, 
Okay, let's sorry. start with her. Oh see what we can get. Bad lieutenant, the role playing game. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Okay. So what's what's this, what's uh what's the plan? Uh, we are going to go start to... with her. Yeah. Okay. So you head to the Ravenwood Apartments. Um, you're driving through Chicago. I'm assuming you rented a car. Um, we'll just we'll chalk that. We'll lump that in with the expenses that you got authorized through the FBI. Um, you get there. Traffic isn't too bad. You get there shortly before um, eight o'clock, and uh, it is. It's a it's a walk up on the third floor of a large building. It's apartment three hundred one. Um, you guys head up, and it's obvious, like right off the bat, something is not right. Um, there is a strong, strong smell of rotting food coming from within the apartment. That's never good. You ever watch that show Hoarders? I have watched that show. It's crazy, right? It's not stuff that people keep. No, I think we're about to walk into that. That watch. Hey, so game plan wise, I distract her. You kind of um search. Cammy? Cammy. Cammy! No problem. <laughs> She's back. We'll, just edit, edit, we'll edit this part out of the pod. Okay. <laughs> How about now? How about yeah. now? Yeah, I got you. Okay. I don't know what is going on with my mic tonight. Okay. All right, so, okay. uh, yeah, Gus, go ahead. So I distract her while you kind of surf around for her first stuff that... Tickles that six cent. Let's do that. I like that plan. I don't like talking. Cool. Hey, do you know how to take care of yourself? Defend yourself? I mean, I got basic training. Were you good at it? <laughs> now I'm thinking I should I'd, come along. I'd say average. I mean, we're not expecting us, are we? No, not at all. I just want to know. I just, it's good to know when you're going into a situation with someone. I do have a scalpel in my go bag, so I do have that. Okay, maybe keep that one. Yeah, maybe don't pull that one out right away. <laughs> okay, noted. All right. Um, here. And he kind of pulls his little extendable baton uh, out of his back pocket and hands it to her and goes, I'm not supposed to give you this, um, but hold on to it. Pop it in your pocket for now. Only use it if you absolutely... Got it. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's go. Yep. No answer. Um, no answer uh, he does like one of those loud authoritative like cop knock cop knock um, <laughs> no answer um, at all no sounds from inside Sarah Sarah it's the police please open the door would I, would I be able to say police I probably have to say FBI right you can, uh, so side note, you can absolutely say um, police. Uh, in fact, they, they recommend that most federal agents say that because it's easier to understand police than it is federal agent. Okay, so that's what he says. Open the door, Sarah. Okay, you reckon we should break in and take a look around? I mean, yes. We're doing a wellness check. Yeah, and, and Gus, with your training and experience, you know that you can easily articulate that the smell of rotting food was potentially the smell of a rotting corpse, and so you wanted to double check. Yep. And how would I break in? Do I have the tools to open a lock? Uh, well, uh, yeah, so are you are you lock picking, or are you gonna, you gonna break the, are you gonna kick the door in? Joe, do you kick know how to pick a lock? Yeah. You want me to kick it down? No. I want you to kick it down. 
What are you getting in since you're not trained in, in surreptitious entry? Yeah, okay, fair enough. All right, here goes. Uh, and he's going to boot the door. We'll, we'll say it, it takes you with your... What, what was your strength score? Let me check your character sheet real quick. Um, pretty Yeah, you've got a pretty decent strength score. you got a 13. Yeah, so it, it takes you a couple tries, but you eventually you, you, you kick the door in. Um, deadbolt rips out of the frame, and the door opens, and immediately that, that smell of rotting food and filth just wafts out and blasts you both in the face. Oh. Ugh. Oh my god. Yeah, you never get used to that. Do I oh, do I recognize that this is like smell of death or is it just food? It doesn't have that same sickly sweet like okay. uh, avatar yeah. scent of meat. It's just, it's mainly food. Um, okay. And even from out in the hallway you can hear the flies. Uh, even in February. Um you can hear the f- swarms of flies, and you look inside. The, the apartment is absolutely a wreck. Um, there are sw- uh, swarms of, of flies on piles of fast food bags. You've got rotten food, half consumed Coca Cola two liters congealing to caramel. Um, definitely a hoarder's <sighs> paradise. The filth is everywhere the bathroom, the kitchenette, even on the bed. Um, it, it, it looks like the bed, nobody's actually slept there in some time. All the sheets are gone, and it's a, essentially a bare mattress. Um, on the wall, uh, as you guys go through, is a map of the eastern United States, and you kind of stop dead, just because your mind is trying to struggle to process what it is you're seeing. Um, it is carefully marked with thumbtacks and strings in intervals heading continuously southeast, uh, first towards Indiana and then into Kentucky. Uh, by the time the, those strings and those thumbtacks reach uh, Tennessee, it becomes much more erratic and it's no longer marked in thumbtacks, but instead in, in scribbled red Sharpie. Um, the map ceases to be updated past Alabama, but at the bottom uh, is some kind of writing, and I'll actually put that up for you guys to see. Oh. Ooh. Drama. There you go. It says, the door, the key, the keyhole, all the same. Open the way for me now. The living, the dead, the dying... All the same, open the way for me now. Praises to Yog Sothoth, praises to his name. Open the way for me now. Well, fuck. Well, shit. <laughs> uh, we need to. Uh, yeah. Does that ring any bells with the research I've been doing lately? No. We need to text them, I think, right away. Yeah, I'm going to send the picture. Uh, Handler, um, I know that she has a higher occult score, but given my my backstory, would I know anything about or have ever heard, also given my research, would I have ever heard about Yogg's? Not, uh, not with your experience. Your experience was with a separate uh, component, of uh, okay. a separate um an entity yeah yeah you you wouldn't you wouldn't have heard that name okay so um yeah there you guys go and uh Here's you... a, i'm sorry not to not to derail um but just for my own education is lovecraft a thing in our universe like does he exist and has he written books we'll, we'll say no simply okay. because yeah <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it'd I'm be like, super awkward if you could just get the the, the information, everything, just by reading H.P. Lovecraft. So. Okay. All right. Good. Just wanted to make sure. No, it's a good question. That's a good and and just at least the way I'm running it, yeah, he doesn't exist. Um, at least, yeah, not in the way that he does in ours. Okay. All right. Should we kind of dig around see what else we can? Yeah, just uh, gloves. Yeah, you both can roll search uh, search checks if you want. Yeah, I brought gloves. I brought some extras. Cool. And I'm gonna. Okay, perfect. I have an extra mask if you want it too. Might help a little bit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, all the protective gear is going on. And search. So, what should we roll, sir? Search. Uh. Okay. 67 out of 51 is a fail. Let's see how uh, this does. 
Yeah, good. 39 nice. and 70. Your accounting is 60, right, Gus? Yeah. yeah. You immediately, <laughs> amongst the detritus and just the filth, you find a bunch of mail. Some of it opened, some of it unopened. Uh, but in there is definitely a bunch of bills that you, you immediately recognize. And going through it, um, it is it is readily apparent that Garrison is on the brink of bankruptcy. Um, essentially, essentially, she's moving money between credit cards. So like taking money up from one to pay the other, um, vice versa, to just cover bills that she can't afford. Um, and in the last year, those payments have just be they're all over the place. They become more and more erratic. Um, however... She has defaulted on her Jeep. Uh, she does have a Jeep registered to her. Um, so that's going to be going to collection soon, from what you can tell. The only thing that she is up to date on is a storage facility in Chicago. It's a what's her? Storage facility. A storage Ooh. facility. Always Joe. a storage facility. Her. Joe. Joe. I yes. There's the address. Uh, it's up for right. the, the lock em up self storage at 3366 North Kinsey Avenue, not far from the apartment. Do you want to go check it out? All right, we'll need to get something. Yeah, we should stop by, I don't know, a tool store and get something to open the lock. Bolt cutter, smart. Is Leave, it, the one is thing... there any. I was just going to say, the one thing that wasn't on there is the actual unit that she's registering. It's just the address for the unit. It's a bill. So not the unit, but the address It'll of the unit. Bad. Yep. Yeah, just follow our noses. And also, I think I could probably talk a, like a front counter person with my FBI badge into giving us the number. Or at least I think I can. Uh... Handler, uh, the numbers on this image, do they make an immediate sense? And if not, I want to cross-reference them with Yogg-Sothoth to see if anything comes up. Numbers, yeah, the numbers are just, they don't make sense. It looks like it's actually the zip code for Tampa, the 30916. Um, and the rest, not so much. And when you, you want to Google Yogg-Sothoth, yeah, I just want to pull up Yaxathos, and then I'll also search that name from, uh, and with the numbers themselves, just in case. Uh, there's so nothing, nothing you get online. Okay. Is Sarah still in the uh, hotel room, or did she go to? Uh, she'd be at the hotel room. Um, she wouldn't be there all the time, but she'd be um. Like, I'm just saying, like, when you got the text, like... Uh, yeah, I'd be coming back to the hotel room. Does this look familiar to you at all? Ring any bells? Mm. It would not, Sarah. Yeah. I didn't encounter that name. Should we get Victor, see if he knows anything, or might know? Uh, probably a good idea. Where is he? Do you know? I will just text him. Never mind. And they text Victor, being like, "Hey, do you do you have do you recognize the words in the text you got from?" Um... Three zero nine one six is for Georgia. It's a Georgia zip code. It's not a Florida zip code, but it is. It is. Okay. It it coincides with the uh, the strings heading south. Okay. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Don't ring any bells for you either, Victor? All right. All right, so Gus and Joe, you guys are going to get some hardware? Yeah, I think we're just going to go buy a pair of bolts. It's an incidental expense. You guys are able to get that uh, pretty easily. Um, so, yeah, you, you have to go to a Walmart because it's the only place that's probably still open at 9, 10 o'clock at night. So, um, but you are able to get it. Um. When we were searching the apartment, did we find anything that looked like a key? You did not. No keys. No. And did we see any documentation that might have had the facility that she was sent to? 
Nothing like that, no. Okay. Okay, that's fine. All right, we should go. Um, I'll, te- uh, I'll text them uh, as they're get- getting out. She's still there. Uh, who did you text? I texted both of you, since, or whoever sent the or whoever sent the text. The group text or something. Yeah, I guess we. I, I figured we have a group text, like a group chat thing. Probably. Uh, so she was there. What's that? There. Yeah. Okay, she is not. Well, did we check all the rooms? Are we sure she's not here? She's with that search score. She's definitely not there. Uh, yeah. No, she's not here. Any indication of? Uh, when she was last there, or when she might have left? I can tell. Most of the food has been there for probably a couple weeks, and the bed definitely hasn't been slept in recently. Yeah. Oh, but then who did? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm gonna when she when Joe replies back um, that she didn't see any trace of her for like in her bed for the past few weeks, and that the 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 food and all that were old. I'm gonna text uh, Tony or Anthony. Is there a picture of Sarah anywhere in her apartment that I can take? Uh, there is a picture of her with um, a young boy and a young girl. Okay, I'm gonna grab it. Okay. So I know what she looks like. Hey, um, just for, to, to reduce confusion, she was probably there recently. It looks like she's not staying there permanently. It looks like she's only moving in and out as needed. Um, so it, it, it's, you can definitely see somebody was there recently, um, because there's a path through the filth and the garbage in the house or the apartment, but. Okay. So like the food is all, is, it's not like stale from one point in time. It's like. Yes, exactly. Or someone's from two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. So she ostensibly could have been there recently. She's definitely not staying there. Okay. I mean, on top of everything else. Um, well, I'll still text Tony and tell him to put an, uh, APB out on her, um, and forgive me because I'm not an actual psychologist, um, whatever uh, sort of uh, high-risk uh, patient alert they can put on her uh, to, to make sure that she's she's uh, kept safe in, in custody. Uh, are you, uh, from, from kind of an, uh, a handler standpoint, are you working on fabricating any records that she was in your treatment? Uh... Maybe you could request it of the agency. Just speak up, just do a consult, some sort of thing. Um, or Victor. Oh, Victor. I'll, I'll, I'll work internally. I'll, I'll ask. Cool. Do that. No, being having worked in this profession, that there is an op, there is a chance that your records could be subpoenaed uh, at some point by law enforcement if it comes okay. to that. Okay. Well, I'm also, I mean, knowing what I know about not only. Anthony, but also the Chicago Police Department, and being having a man on the inside, I'm not as worried about that. No, that makes sense. Given their track record, uh, so yeah, um, I, I'm like I, I will do it if I need to, but I'm not worried about it. Okay. I think that Tony has my back here. Yeah, absolutely. Is the Chicago Police, Police Department like pretty well known for horrible not stuff up, or they are horribly corrupt? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's next, kids? Storage unit. Yeah, unless you guys over in Florida are doing anything. Uh, sorry for the Florida guys. Is there anything you guys want to do in the meantime? Just what I said. Uh, otherwise, no. Uh, I'm just going to try my damn just to find a decent... Nice, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I would be trying to uh, hack in to, to find out more information about Sarah, but uh, I imagine that'll take a while. It's definitely going to take some time. It's probably going to take you most of the night, if not into the next day. Yeah. Focusing mainly on Chicago PD records? Especially... Um, when I find out that they think that she might have been taken to a to a hospital, I'll I will also try to look up for medical records, uh, 
mental hospital admissions, that sort of thing. So, so you are you are able to find that um, she was medically retired for psychiatric purposes due to uh, trauma and stressors on the job, and her last assignment was as a detective to a narcotics unit. Um, and there was a, from what you can tell on the records, there was some incident she was involved in. She was given a medal for valor under fire, but um, for whatever reason, mentally she broke and uh, received treatment from a department uh, psychologist, uh, but was uh, shortly thereafter medically retired from the force. Okay. Do we have the name of the psychologist? Let me check. Yeah. I'll, I will. I will pass that information on, along. Again, uh, write it down on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, and and text forward it to people. Yeah, the the psychologist's name was Alberto Molina. Okay, Alberta. No. And, and so she was involved in narcotics. Um, I was a uh, narcotics detective. Can I find any inside information about uh, the last case she was involved in? Computer science, um, roll for me. Alrighty. Um, I would separately like to look up Alberto Molina. Any information I can find about him? And information yeah, you find a linkedin profile uh just with all the modern information and uh the fact that they're an employee of the chicago police department and that's really all you can find on their practice okay um can gus text uh victor and ask him to take a look into what the last case she worked on was uh, or maybe the last case before she started getting uh spots against her yeah, that's. Uh, I'm looking into the case where she was commended for valor under fire, right? Yeah. Um, so that was that, and that was a 54 out of 80. So you, you succeed. Uh, um, it was. Uh, they were assigned to a, fe- a joint federal task force on that one. Um, there aren't a whole lot of details because it was mainly a federal case, uh, a federal task force. Those records will be maintained on federal databases. Uh, but you do find some information on their involvement. Um, they were mainly responsible for helping handle local confidential informants who were providing insight into uh, local drug trafficking. Um, from what else you can tell, essentially there was a shootout. Another um, another cop died. Uh, her partner by the name of Detective Hank Thomas was killed. Um, and she was able to kill the shooters, and which led to her citation for bravery. But uh, it definitely led to some significant PTSD. Would I, um, because I don't actually know how how the FBI works, Uh, if it was a joint federal task force, would I be able to just call and kind of like relatively casually get that information or would it like call somebody and get that information or would it require like a hell of a good reason? Would I be able to kind of like fast talk my way past it? Like this was a, uh, from what uh, Doug is, from what Victor is able to find out, this is primarily a DEA, a Drug Enforcement Administration matter. Um, so they would, it's not something you could exactly make a phone call for. You could request it, but you're going to get a lot of questions as to why. What about from my best friend, Buck, who I've totally talked about before on the show, who works for the DEA? <laughs> <laughs> Buck from the DEA, he's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't have the time to do that now, so especially since it's later at night. Okay, so we go to the. So you head to the storage unit, and um, what, what's your what's your first step? You going in to talk to the to the clerk, to whoever's working the front desk. You guys gonna walk around and scope it out. It is gate controlled, so there's a gate entry. So you have to kind of process through that front office to get inside. Uh, yeah, I think we just walk right up to the camera. All right, it's a, it's a 36-year-old guy. Um, he's wearing a name tag. It says Sonny on it. He um, says, Evening, can I help you? Good evening, sir. Uh, how are you doing? And I guess this kind of tips his hat to him. I'm doing fine, sir. What can I do for you this evening? Yeah, um, I'm actually here on business, uh, uh, unfortunately enough. And he kind of takes his badge and shows him the FBI badge. 
pulls out his cell phone and starts recording. <laughs> what are you doing? I do not consent to this encounter, sir. I have a bill of rights in my pocket, and that is all you will get from me. Uh, yeah, I'm not here for you. Whatever you want, you will need a warrant, sir. I know my rights. Yeah, I'm not here for anything to do with you. I just came for a conversation. I wasn't even going to ask you. Gosh, people are so touchy nowadays. What's your name? My name is M Mr. Caldwell. That is all you need, sir. Did you say your name was Mr. Caldwell? Are you guys related? Mr. Mr. Cardwell. Sorry. Cardwell. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> my name is my name is Caldwell. I thought you said hey. the same thing. I was going to get, I got kind of excited. Agent, Co and, Agent Caldwell, uh, what this... is your badge number, sir? Uh, it's right here. And he holds it up for the guy to take a look at it. <laughs> and he, he zooms in with his camera. Yeah, there you go, buddy. See, there's nothing to worry about. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not here to uh, kick up a fuss or cause you any trouble. Um, can I shake your hand? Are you okay with that? Or will you consent to shaking my hand I, as a, I, like a hello? I do not consent to physical contact, sir. Please stay on that side of the counter. Man, the manners up north are so much different. Um, well, I guess if we're not even allowed to have any sort of a, uh, an interaction with one another, um, I guess we'll just see ourselves out. Please do Thanks so, for your sir. Time. God bless America. Have yeah. a great day. Great meeting. Well, man. you don't really seem to be that into America if you're not willing to help out one of the federal agents that works for it, but you have a nice day as well, sir. Recording as you walk out. All right, we need a plan there's, B. Yeah, there's literally no way around. Um. Well, it's like a secure. I just want to let you guys know. I uh, there's three possible options for that. I rolled randomly to see which one you would get, and that's the one that came up. Amazing. Hmm. So we can't. We can't break in there. There's no way. You could scale the fence. I mean, but it, you, there is camera coverage from what you can tell. Yeah. How can we look stealth? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gus isn't stealthy at all. Um, we forge a warrant? Is that something? You could absolutely try Gus, to do that. Gus takes a deep, like, ooh. I'm just suggesting. I mean, that's, I think, a very drastic... Uh, thing. He's going to text Dr. Mraz and ask for the contact information of the person that she was in contact with. Oh, now you want my help. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't text that. I do say that to myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do. Um, I'll text Tony. Uh, actually, I'll call him. And, and just FYI, Handler, um, he has a burner phone uh, okay. that I call him on, just so that it's not like work-related or anything like that. Um, but I do call him. Yeah, what's up, Em? Hi. Uh, uh, so, uh, about my patient from yesterday that you checked up. Uh, she's missing. Uh... The colleagues of mine who went to do a wellness check for themselves that I told you about earlier, uh, they're at a they're at her storage facility. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, he's a hardcore libertarian. Uh, recorded uh, one of the agents. Uh, he is FBI, uh, and uh, is, is there anything you you can do to help move the situation out? If, if this guy's as libertarian as you said, they're not going to respond that much better to me. But, I mean, we try to get. Have you got? Have are they law enforcement? Uh, one of them is FBI. They have a warrant. She gives a pause, like a. She doesn't say anything. Uh, the only way, the only way we're going to be able to get in there is if either a we have a warrant or b we wait until somebody else is working. 
I was just thinking of waiting until I'm at... Ah, you're no fun. I don't... Uh, again, she, she's gone, and, and according to them, uh, it looks like her apartment has been completely abandoned. I fear that she is in danger. I, I, I don't know what to do at this point, but I, I think urgency is, is the best approach here. All right, let me uh, let me see what I can do. I, I'll call a judge. And I'll call one of my one of my buddies in the Texas bureau. I'll text you the address of the storage facility. All right, I'll let you know. Thank you. Connections, connections, Doctor Morass. Hang up. Um. All right. He's going to turn to Joe and go, listen, I haven't heard back from her yet. I think maybe our best bet might be to chill out for a little bit, see if this douchebag switches off. With... Car, you, where'd you guys go back to? I think in the car, yeah. Okay. In there, um, one of you, uh, one or both, roll alertness. Yeah, twenty-five out of seventy, you make it. Oh, nice, Brett. As you're walking around, kind of hey. waiting to see what's going on, you see somebody walking towards the storage facility. Um, down this street at this time of night, it definitely stands out to you. Um. African American woman, probably in her fifties. Um, it's hard to tell from this distance, but there's something in her walk, something just the way she moves. It's this woman is not well. Uh, her clothes are kind of hanging off of her. Um, she's carrying two well to be grocery bags, um, and it looks like the weight is almost enough to snap her arms. Um, she's walking towards the storage unit and. If you point her, you point her out to Joe. Joe, you recognize her as as it, there's a very good chance she could be the same woman in the picture. Yeah, I show him the picture. It's her. It's immediately gets out of the car. Or sorry, you were gonna say something. Oh, I was saying that's her. Okay, let's go. Okay. She's uh, walking up to the the keypad to gain access into the uh, the facility. Uh, he's gonna... uh, I think he's gonna ahead of time. Can I? Would I be able to see the keypad before? Would I be able yeah. to see the keypad from here? Yeah, it's out in the open. Yeah. Yeah, like see the numbers that she punches in before. You would have to be up close on that. How close do I have to get? Uh, realistically, probably ten feet. 10, 20 feet and there's not a lot of cover out there okay well he's not gonna say anything to her as he approaches but he is gonna quite clearly approach her see if she notices him um but kind of like see if he can also keep an eye on that she turns to see you uh sees you walking towards her okay before punching him in the number and she drops the bags and reaches under her shirt ma'am Hello? She pulls out a revolver and pops off a shot, and it goes wide. Oh. Uh, okay. Joe, get down. He's going to pull out his gun, and uh, I guess he has to fire, right? She's got a gun, and she's... That's what law enforcement people do. Roll firearms. How far, how far, how far away from her am I? 30 feet at this point. I'm oh, going so for cover. She, she notices from far away. Okay. I wouldn't be able to cover the distance. No, you're kind of trapped out in the open. Shit. She fired at you and she missed. I'm going for cover. Do what you need to. <laughs> I know, but I like part of me wants to like run right at her and see if I can tackle her, but at 30 feet is too far. Like she'll shoot. Good sprint. 
I'm gonna. Ooh, this is a really dumb idea. I'm gonna sprint and. Something real quick. Is it whether or not I'm dead? No, no, yeah, <laughs> no. Um. So, so with this, you can you can't do two things at a time. You can either move, attack, dodge. You pretty much have to do one or the other. Hmm. See okay, so I could get yeah. up close to her, but then she would have another. I don't want to kill her. Do I have one of those like fiery tasers? You know, you know, you like fire them across the distance. Was that in your equipment? I don't know. Is it in an FBI's equipment? Uh, it should be in your. Do equipment they normally list. have those? Uh, I don't think so. They usually don't. Let me double check your equipment here. Um. It sh yeah, this is. Uh, you could try to do non-lethal shots. You could know how to do that as an officer. You could do a cold shot. Yeah. I guess so. I just figure like if you're a police yeah. officer and somebody's gotta, firing at you, gotta make a decision, man. Up. Gotta go. The main. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the main thing to do would be fire for the mast. Um, yep. Yeah, he's gonna shoot. Are you, are you aiming for anything particular, or are you just gonna shoot? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna aim for her. Oh, so, one that's the gun. so in this case, with with with, if you're taking the aim action, you're not gonna be able to shoot, but you will have advantage, like essentially the equivalent of advantage on your next roll, you'll have plus twenty. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, then what I'd like to do instead is I want to take the dodge action. Uh, and I want to see, like, while I'm taking the dodge action, can I like zigzag towards her? No, essentially dodge is moving to cover. Okay, well then I'm gonna run straight up. Okay, so you're closing the distance. All right, uh, so you're you're up on her. Um, Joe, what are you doing? I'm taking the dodge action. I'm getting up. All right. Seeing you charging forward, she's gonna take another shot at you. She gets it off. Uh, she she shoots and she hits you. Okay, I am wearing uh, Kevlar. Is going to be one d twelve. What does Kevlar do? In this case? So in this uh, Kevlar will absorb some of the damage. Sorry, guys. Hey, Paladin. Here's hoping he survive a D12 of damage. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. What's your HP like? I don't know. How? What's your like literal con? Uh, it's a, it's like average. Okay. Let me see what your hit points are here. I've got thirteen. Okay. Um. So But you immediately feel this this round impact your Kevlar vest, and it knocks the wind from you immediately. Um, every iota of of your focus is just immediately pushed to its limits, and you struggle to stay on your feet. Um, you know it didn't penetrate the vest, but it feels like you have broken some ribs. Um, you're hurt, um, and you're you know you can't take another shot like that. But you're still on your feet. Okay, uh, I'm going to disarm her and knock her to the ground. Okay, so let's see here. Um, they make an unarmed attack, so just roll that. Okay, that is my best skill. I have a 90 in it. Nice. You got this. You Wait, why do you have this. a 90 in it? With How did I get a 90 in it? Yeah. With hard experience, yeah. you can you do oh. plus 10 to certain skills. Yeah. Oh. Nice. 64. She, um, you, you were able to tackle her and pin her to the ground, and she immediately starts screaming. How much damage did I take? Nine. Does Sunny come out and start filming? Nine? You took nine Ooh. points of damage, yeah. And that's after the reduction from the Kevlar? Yep. It, it, uh, I rolled a 12. <gasps> Holy shit. <laughs> <sighs> Damn. That will go ahead and end tonight's session. 
Okay. Oh, man. That got escalated very quickly. Thank you for listening to the Black Project Gaming Podcast. This has been Sweetness, written by Dennis Detwiller for the Delta Green RPG. Join us again on February 5th as our agents continue their investigation. Until then, I'm Vince, your host and handler, with Brett as FBI Special Agent Gus Coldwell, Cammie as Dr. Josephine McCarthy, Doug as Victor Mikhailov, Jack as Dr. Emily Mraz, and Sonia as Sarah Chakravorty. Thank you and good night.